on uh, uh, the group. Uh, on the group, yeah, the group's super hard. So I just like I'm like you know I don't want to start this interview off and, and like immediately mispronounce your last yeah. name. <laughs> no, I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. roll with Craig Henzel. Not, you know where you want to go with this. We got right. enough. We, can, we yeah. I I knew that's what I told Grace. I was like, listen. She's like, well, what do you guys want to do? I was like, I know that me and Craig are going to be able to talk for as long as we need to talk. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we got it covered. But So I'm here with Craig Hensel from Lakewood, Ohio, Lakewood Window Cleaning, Mr. Rolling with the Window Cleaner himself, um, WCR rep, um, Window Cleaning Renaissance man, um, master of all things. You know what I mean, I, I mean, I got to spend a weekend with you, uh, well, a day with you, what, two weekends ago, and yeah. I, I feel confident in saying that you are a master of all things. Like, I really feel like, I feel like you got your toes in everything at one point in time in your life. Yes? I don't, yeah, probably, <laughs> yes. If I haven't, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, the, I, I don't know, the, I have an outlet through Elon Musk, if he ever gives me an email or a call. We just need to get my truck situated properly to get up, and I'd like to get the International Space Station done. Right. Waterfed. Dude, your truck is, I mean, some people would look at it and be like, dude, what is going on? But it, when when you see it, I'm sure it works as good as it looks. Like, you put some thought into that. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I just, you know, and as, as far advanced as your loadout is on your truck, you are a third-generation window cleaner. And things didn't start like that, did they? Like, you grew up with window cleaning. Yes, and it did not start out that way. It was a lot of hard work, learning, a lot of uh, just commitment to window cleaning itself Mm -hmm. to really grasp the idea, the concept. And, uh, you know, you know this being in the four-season region here, Mm -hmm. applying water-fed, water filtration, window cleaning, not water fed pole mm-hmm. it is not what there's no magic in the water fed pole itself so it's not water fed pole when the yeah, right but you know the <laughs> the differences in the regions applying mm-hmm. it in the regions but learning it in the region where it started in california basically mm-hmm. that's where ionics that i understood during my days mm-hmm. that's where i wanted to go for that Mm -hmm. we're in a four season region who was doing water filtration window cleaning back when i was a kid in this area in this area no nobody i mean and for geographical reasons like so people know me and craig live on a road called route six like i could drive i make one left hand turn and one right hand turn and i'm on route six and then i'd be what 45 minutes from you and an hour months. hour yeah. 45 minutes to an hour yeah so we're really we're we're close to each other but we we deal with the same set of circumstances as far as the weather goes and how it affects our business so when you say it's difficult to use water fed pole here all year round um and i think that's kind of an understatement <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. it's very Clean up uh, using pure water all season in a in a temperature in a temperature below freezing or close to freezing is very difficult to do, you know. So just the work, not just the work itself, mm-hmm. but there is also the responsibility of the understanding of the equipment mm-hmm. and the maintenance and care during the winter months, especially. We're kind of the reverse here. It's weird because learning in California Mm -hmm. and then applying in a place like Tucson, Arizona, and, uh, you know, having the understanding of areas like Houston, Texas, uh, traveling around and doing it in different regions. uh, Another part we could talk on is the the window cleaner vagabond that I am Mm -hmm. that kind of created the whole rolling with the window cleaner idea, Mm -hmm. but the different regions. But you take a place like, uh, you know, let's take Phoenix, Arizona, mm-hmm. and a, a window cleaner out in Phoenix, Arizona. They're never going to ex- really experience the deep set freeze that we get in the winter. The wind chill that drives that deep set freeze enough to set in and actually freeze the water in the chamber, uh, set in long enough overnight. But where they're getting 
their exposure is the direct sun and drying out, leaving it right. outside for a few days. It's 110 degrees, right. but the radiant heat from the asphalt, Phoenix is an asphalt jungle, and the radiant heat effect from that coming up, it mm. just cooks anything. I mean, and you're, you know, when you're saying that, you know, you're mentioning the weather and the dynamics of all that, and, you know, you're a tinkerer. So when I went and seen you, we went to the Rolling with a Window Cleaner event at the brewery, which was, the food was amazing, by the way. Um, I gotta have, that's my fault. I forgot to turn that off. That, um, I know. That was Immigrant Sun Brewery. <laughs> yeah. Im Immigrant Sun Brewery. Amazing oh, place. Well, amazing no. food. But you actually had two Tucker DI cartridges, um, hanging from your rack because you were like, I'm freezing these like to see what they'll do. <laughs> oh, for years. I've had yeah. those up there for years. I've never taken them down. Um, the COVID year, we did all our mm -hmm. schools, and the, those are funny because I, you know how old those are, mm -hmm. and that those DI, they have uh, going back to the COVID year. Prior to that year, prior they both spent. Oh, okay. They both spent. Now, now we use them as a DI only, just to see how long can I use these before they go. Right. So they spent. Then I added the RO, inline those with the RO. It mm -hmm. kind of brought them back to life a bit. We used those in the COVID year, another run on the schools we did in our town. Mm -hmm. uh, then, yeah, it was kind of weird. Then they spent a second time. And I kind of, so the COVID year, I, they, they, they kind of mount there. Then they can come off. There was a cart that they would then mount to. We roll into interior courtyards, then bring them out, put them back on. So I want to say they've been on there year round two years before that COVID year was what, two years ago now. So four years. Yes, they've been now two, yeah. Two, three years now. It's close to, it's going on three, I think maybe. Going on three. So yeah. probably around five years, those have been sitting up there exposed. And mm. one of the things is, you know, it's not just, Hey, you know, we're not using this anymore, but there are properties that a lot of PVC is still utilized for mm. poles. But how long do these last? You, you know, right. do, you know, do we use UV coatings? Do we reapply UV coatings? Right. How often should we? In Arizona, I would be reapplying probably a UV coating maybe once every month during season, mm -hmm. you know, but out in our region, yeah, a few times a year, maybe. I said right. the weather, because we get wind that beats that stuff, but it all dries and cracks, becomes brittle. So it kind of helps me understand a little more about the function of that unit. Why was it designed that way when at the t same time period we had this and mm -hmm. we had this, mm -hmm. but there to some degree, you know, God, I don't know. It's uh, or gosh, I don't know for those that are religious. Sorry. But uh, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, idea is it, there, there are so many ways to skin the filtration cap for window cleaning. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what I learned in California, you know, late 90s, uh, going into 2000, you know, the Ionics, the fiberglass, single bed and mixed bed resin, DI tanks, mm -hmm. nobody was really using carbon sediment filtration at all. There was no RO. You were just using larger one and a half cubic foot. Use mm -hmm. two of them. If they're single, two mixed bed, you're gang them together. And there's your flow. There's your... I mean, you're bringing water down, but you know, most major cities in California, that is where a lot of these folks were kind of going at this and applying it and really moving forward with the idea. I have a, I have a, an IPC hydro cart, an electric hydro cart, a four stage, um, you know, the big carts, they're like, yeah. I think like five or six grand. The guy that I bought the company from, um, he bought one as soon as he started the business. I mean, he, he I, don't, I think maybe 2004, 2005, somewhere around in there. And um, it never got used because, you know, it was fiberglass poles. And yeah. I don't really oh. think, I don't, there's a lot of dudes out there that, that probably aren't aware how much technology has changed in just the last five years. I mean, very short well, period of time, light years it has changed. Um, oh, yeah. That I mean, and that that IPC hydro cart is uh, in a in like in a time like it's locked, it's frozen in time. I've never done anything to it. 
except for change the filtration in it. You know what I mean? I've never, you know what I mean? It's not, it, it's not put together the way it used to be. There's things, you know, <laughs> it doesn't, but it works. It works, but I mean, if you look at some of the fittings from back then, oh yeah, you look at every aspect of it, the way that it changed so fast, so fast. Where they realized they're like, hey, wait a minute, you know, a lot of this stuff <clears throat> came crossed over from pool filtration. Mm -hmm. People were taking from there. If you think about it, like cellular, we really didn't have. You know, there there were only certain areas that had solar power on their house or any kind of in-house filtration. But even back then, the in-house filtration, potassium chloride, the, the potassium filtration systems, I mean, those things are giant. Mm -hmm. They're so big, they can't put them on the truck. The pool systems are so small, they don't effectively meet our needs. So they've had to, oh my gosh, yeah, they've changed it so many times. And mm -hmm. we're not done changing. We're not done because, at least I don't think we're done. I think we're just at, at the, we're breaching, I don't know, we're, we're about to be born actually we're still developing inside the yeah. window cleaning water fed womb yeah <laughs> and we're we're our parts are still growing yeah. right and then we're going to be born and then it's like ah yeah. but uh you know it but what it is is that it's so funny is only you can understand this or guys like us ladies like us in these kind of regions in canada mm -hmm. they'll get it when we dig deeper into the understanding california all of those coastal regions that are warm, all of the valleys that have the heat, the dry mm -hmm. heat, the humid heat, it doesn't matter. They they can work year round with these systems. Right. And we Again, have there's something to be said, I, you know, and I'm not trying to be like we got it rougher than you guys got it, but there's something to be said um to about keeping a business running when what you do for a living gets hampered by the weather about three or four months out of the year you know it's it takes a special kind of person to keep that you going gotta, <laughs> we have a, our our whole thing here with grace and i with our family businesses they're they're only eight months in the year mm -hmm. forget about those other four months whatever yep. everybody else does in 12 months vacation, we, got, we have vacation, to do an eight we have to do it in eight and account for weather inside of that eighth month eight month period if we can do it in eight months, those other four months, oh my gosh, like right today, you, your weather is probably worse than ours, but the winds have been blowing, the rain has been driving sideways. It's Any, nuts right now outside. Nobody's doing chair work on the mm -hmm. side of a building with the wind alone. Yeah. Uh, there's no lift work, no scaffold work going on outside. There's there's no, on a day like that, even water fed work. And especially when you're out there with the penetration and you're wearing, I wear, on an average, I, I, because of the wind that we deal with, the wind is penetrating. It's not just cold. Mm -hmm. When you've got a constant 15, 17, <laughs> maybe 20 mile an hour wind. Like for have, four months. <laughs> like for more four months straight. <laughs> layers of Under Armour yep. and a hoodie. Yeah. And a, what, what is that? What is that? That's a, a, res, that's under, that's a resistance band. The Under Armour is a resistance band mm -hmm. that we wear, restricts mm -hmm. our movement, and when we have that pole up in the air and the wind's whipping and at the top of that pole, resistance everywhere, you know, you you really got to, you, yeah. I have to condition to work year round. I, I actually do it because I want to. Um, I enjoy those days that I'm challenged out there. I, 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 I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even, I don't even wear a, like a winter coat. Mark, Mark Tanner come up here from, um, uh, from Florida like I don't know it's like 2019 it's pretty cold out and he's like let's I want to go clean some windows I'm like okay let's go clean he wanted to you know I want to clean in the winter I want to know what this is like I'm like all right cool so we went out he of course froze his ass off but I went out and I did um uh I don't know maybe like you know like maybe like 10 storefronts or so with him and then we went and polished some glass but I was in a t-shirt a long sleeve, like a thermal shirt and a and a hooded sweatshirt, and he's like, "Dude, how are you?" And I'm like, "I don't. It's not really that bad. It's if it right. gets if it gets super cold, I'll oh, put on a vest. I'll put on a vest. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just too much trying to clean windows with a with a big Carhartt on. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Oh, it's but then it's subjective because what is cold to whom, and 
that's also regional again we are so conditioned to this and you know grace and i we have weekly uh you know joe's deli a weekly restaurant we've got to get that inside done by seven o'clock doors open people are coming in they want breakfast so we're out and we've got the front outside entrance out we're out of their way mm. come on in enjoy your day and we're outside seven o'clock every week and we're doing those it doesn't matter we fluctuate if the rain's driving but if it's just 23 mile an hour wind chill and it's you know i don't know 15 below zero we're out there working we're getting it done 7 a.m and i would like to bring mark up and we go do that that we do a bi-weekly <laughs> house on the lake it is right on the lake and i'm telling you there are some of these folks they they don't they really don't understand this is real old world window cleaning yeah. we don't we do residential like most people do storefronts mm. We don't have to do the whole house. You have a, if I'm going to walk around the ground level of a storefront that has two front plates, two side plates, a door plate, a transom that has a screen on the outside, step ladder in, hold that little bar, the old school bar, the window folds in on the inside, reach over, clean the glass on the outside, close it with the bar, latch it, clean the inside. The door. You've got six plates of glass. You know what I mean? Right. I'm going to go do that. And honestly, we're so fast at it. We do it so repetitive in our region mm -hmm. because of every element that drives on this glass year round. But if I'm going to go do that for these people, the storefronts in my town, and we've got $7 out only on this. Mm -hmm. We go down the whole strip. By the time you're done, two sides of the street from one part, you, you know, you understand. We're mm -hmm. making money. But if I'm willing to do this for storefronts, because we have to have that winter year-round security to supplement the, the, the fact that we have all that weather and we miss the residential because of it. Why won't we sell our residential on the idea of, hey, I may not need to come and do all your second or third floor windows mm -hmm. in January or February, but you live on the lake. Your mm -hmm. view windows are getting hammered on right. the outside. and. We're going to have a 30 degree day right here. We'll come by and do those. Well, you know what? In two weeks, they get hammered. You want them done every two weeks? We'll come by. If you yeah. want them done weekly, we'll put a price. I make more going to do ground level and even skylight out only on houses mm -hmm. than I do on the strip of storefronts. Right. There's one place I plug in and I do water. I got a, I've got a couple of, uh, um, I, I have a couple of customers that I've had for years that are like right on the lake. And they go year round. Sometimes they're like, I just need to do the lakeside. It's so bad. You know what I mean? I just, and I'm like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? And I get paid well for it. You know what I mean? And they don't balk at the price because they realize what I'm doing. Exactly. They, you know what I mean? They know what I'm out there. And, and when you live next to a lake and get that wind like that, you know, out of the north. Blame Canada. Blame Canada. Yeah. You 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 have a healthy respect for, you know, like a guy out on the – not many people in – um moderate climates where it's you know it's nice outside 90 percent of the time they most people don't have any respect for that you know what i mean you know what i mean yeah. not really many people have much respect for any blue collar guy anyways you know what i mean even if you know the heat just dealing with the heat in those nice places like that you know is a pain you know what i mean so yeah, yeah you um you kind of we've kind of glossed over it a couple times you've kind of tiptoed around it a little bit and i want to make sure that we cover this because I'm also super interested in this. How, you know, like Lakewood window cleaning, the, the, the window cleaning bug, I'm assuming being that it was a family business, you were bit by your grandfather and your father, correct? Pretty much. Pretty so, much. like, how did that all start? For, I mean, do you know how it started, for, like, for your grandfather, oh, gosh, for yeah. instance? Well... <laughs> the the he purchased Lakewood Window Cleaning from his boss in 1935 somewhere in this actual desk, which is his and was my dad's desk. Mm -hmm. The actual phone my grandmother used is right up there on the mantel, uh, rotary phone. Mm -hmm. But uh, he bought the business in 1935. Lived over in Cleveland a little bit into Cleveland mm -hmm. in Tremont. And it's just right in the way. And we're right next to downtown Cleveland, west side suburbs. And he came over during the day. It, it, the story of that is interesting itself because that's the passion. My grandfather was a, 
he was more like I, I don't know my dad. I'm, I'm a bit of my dad. I'm a bit of my grandfather. He what he worked as a grocery. He at a grocery store, Fisher Brothers. He bagged groceries, stock shelves at night. They would unload the trucks, bring it in, put it in back then. He'd bring it in the back, put it in the freezer, put it down here into the basement, roll it down this chute. You know, so he would do it. It's the Depression era. So for folks to understand, it's the Depression era. So he was doing whatever he could doing that. If he couldn't get work doing that, what did any guy? My dad, my grandfather was a short guy. You've seen Grace. My grandfather was tinier than Grace. She was she's wow. bigger than his. I'll get to this, but she's bigger than his actual outfits that we have. No shit. Yeah, my grandfather was a tiny guy, so he was the perfect candidate to do belt work. And during the Depression era, it was hard to get jobs. And for a job like that, that was dangerous. One of we are one of the most dangerous jobs there is. Underwater welding window cleaning Mm -hmm. but that belt work is (laughs) what he was tiny so he could get out that window belt in lightweight lean back your featherweight you're not putting a lot of stress on those anchors Mm -hmm. you know i'm taller i that's gonna do a lot of damage on me crawling out you we don't want to crawl out that window like that but he's tiny grace would be perfect for belt work. oh yeah perfect because but you know you go out you do your work and he was good because you know there's another side to him that made him elegant in his window cleaning and mm. if you look at pictures not only did those guys my th- there's a couple guys look like this look like that here's my grandfather he's got his nice trousers on his dress shoes and he's got his nice button-up shirt now you put that jacket on he's ready to go out for the evening he takes the jacket off and he just goes out the window and he's window cleaning and I, there would but what else did he do that gave him the finesse that he had uh-huh. for his window cleaning he was a vaudeville performer oh really he was a vaudeville performer cool. and we'll have to maybe come on the squeegee life show with grace and myself we'll get the pictures we can show yeah, that definitely the lee brothers uh-huh. in cleveland was a was a this this was a theater town uh-huh. oh yeah and, definitely playhouse square oh I mean, you know well, yeah ballet vaudeville yeah. musicals this was a and a big just entertainment was very big. Now he was, you know, when I talk about this, you have to imagine like Fred Astaire mm-hmm. or Gene Kelly with the top hat, the cane, mm-hmm. and we still have these outfits. I'm trying to actually make those 3D boxes and put together a little display, uh, you know, so it, it can really show him off who he was in that part of his life. But being that he had, he did the dance. They had the orchestra behind them. They still have the sheet music, pictures of the, the I don't know, were they, my wife is over here, the Flapper Girls, or what were they, the, the girls that performed with the Vaudeville Act? Not Flappers, but they, they used to have a couple of girls doing the dances with them, mm-hmm. and the two of them would do their dance. Uh, the orchestra behind, then they would have an MC who did the jokes and whatnot, maybe a juggler or somebody, a comedian in between, bring out the number and they do the dance. It's like that Gene Kelly, every movie back then, when we were kids, we were watching movies from our grandparents' days. Yeah. Yes. And like Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, they yeah. all sang, they like, yes. oh, I'm singing in the rain and dancing. Yeah. I'm like, we should do something like Squeegee Life Presents, WCR Presents. Clean, squeezing in the rain, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. squeezing in the rain, so, you know, dancing around. Hey, listen, I'll, I'll film it. How about that? I'll film it. <laughs> I'm not singing and dancing, but I'll film it, bro. <laughs> but Grace actually yeah. teaches ballet. Okay. And she could be the one, We she could be dancing and squeezing in the rain. <laughs> right. Like here in our area, like today. But yeah. So my grandfather had that elegance, that glide on the stage, that... Uh-huh. Just that gracefulness. Well, that would automatically like transfer into cleaning windows. You know, yeah, the energy. (laughs) Like Grace with ballet, she's a natural on on, even on a step ladder. But the balance, yes, that it takes, the coordination, the dexterity, you know, all of those things apply. And I, I took ballet, jazz, tap, Grace uh, with my daughters, and then Grace has been my teacher at times. I have been in the Nutcracker, Swan Lake, Coppelius. I've seen Paleo. some of your I've seen some of your posts about doing the ballet and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That's pretty cool, man. But that 
fuels the body it gives mm -hmm. us the energy and it gives us that balance that core mm -hmm. and transfers to the ladder i'm a ladder jock by nature by right. you know, from my i mean i think maybe people might have the impression that you know craig doesn't know what a squeegee is you know what i mean because you're you, you love the technology of pure water window cleaning you know what i mean you really you that's like your thing you dig that but i mean you're i mean i'm assuming that your grandfather picked this up in the 30s so when did your father get a hold of it uh, or did see. he get, or did he, did he, did he take over Lakewood window cleaning or did he start his own window cleaning company? What, how did that all work? It's so interesting now because history timelines, it puts it all together. My grandfather, 1935 mm -hmm. he ends up, my grandmother says, you're going to marry me. Okay. You're going to stop dancing. That mm -hmm. nightlife is over. You're going to, the, your boss is selling the company. You're going to buy the company. We're moving the family to Lakewood, Ohio. He bought two houses side by side. Mm -hmm. Her family, his family moved in, Aunt Flo, her sister upstairs. So we grew up that way. The families were there mm -hmm. side by side, doubles up and down. Garages were both We're talking filled. Christmas story type shit is what yeah. we're talking about here, guys. <laughs> that, you know, these houses, yeah. exactly that yeah. kind of feel. Christmas yeah. story kind of feel, exactly that. Because want to know what's funny, my grandparents both grew up in Tremont, which is where that is. The, right. they, my, they grew down the street from that house. Right. So they're in that hood right there, the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. they moved here because then, you know, now people have to understand if you see pictures through from my grandfather to my dad's days, mm -hmm. even though the name of the company on the office was Lakewood Window Cleaning, mm -hmm. on the truck, you put Lake Window Cleaning Mm. And uh, let's see. I keep it right here. In the I, see, I want to say I seen some some difference between the what Lake Wood and then I seen on like some of the stuff memorabilia around the house that says Lake. Uh, I don't know. Does that pick up? I don't know if it does. Yes, but right there. You see the phone number. Yes. L A. Yeah. So Lakewood, L A. Uh. So that our phone numbers were based on dialing Lakewood. Mm -hmm. two three six seven mm -hmm. so then they condensed everything down because late everything in town was lakewood this where there's still there we are lakewood window cleaning there's lakewood heating cooling lakewood exterminating lakewood right. lawn care right, right. They're everybody <laughs> but back in those days the the way that phones progressed and how they advertised on the truck they didn't really advertise. They didn't have, what do they call that? The wraps and everything. And what do they call the mm. sublimation shirts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, I it's just, hey, I'm going to wear this and uh, that, clean windows. <laughs> yeah. Clean windows. Game man window cleaner. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Arr, I'm with you on that. Yeah. So, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of that where, you know, you guys got to be straight laced and i have to have a uniform shirt with my name on it and all that stuff like that and it's understandable because but we never that's not how it was window cleaning was mm -hmm. just a thing that mm -hmm. you didn't advertise for it here's a company that's yep. in the phone book and it's just window cleaning it, it was, we didn't have to attract them to us and to a degree our business we still run the same way we don't so do i we don't have to attract them to us they yeah. they just they want us here in our yeah. region yeah. and they because we are part of the older part of the country, mm -hmm. we have learned things a little differently than they have in the newer parts of the country mm -hmm. where they appreciate and respect the value of the time that the individual puts in and the effort and mm -hmm. the conditions in which they put themselves in. To, do, to get that job done. Get that it's, job done yeah. for you. They appreciate it in a yeah. much different way. My exposure to all the different states, I can just say without a doubt, I would rather be a window cleaner here in this region for that reason because we're much more appreciated here than anywhere else that i've experienced but again growing up here and dealing with what we deal with some of these other areas are not accustomed to old school window cleaning so back to my grandfather he buys the company so as he transitions into a window cleaner he is now doing more residential rather than doing all of the building work and my grandmother didn't want him doing the building work, but mm -hmm. 
little did she know that he was safer doing the belt work than being up on those wood ladders because you know the stack ladders they were wood yeah yeah so that's what we had garage after garage bay filled with wood stacks wood planks wood scaffolds ladder jacks you name it they had to take storm windows off skin them off we don't skin a window and that, that doesn't mean skip a window to me it's like peeling the skin off you skin the window you peel the window off the house you skin mm. it go skin those storms you are up two maybe three floors on big tall wooden extension ladders metal ladder jacks wood planks which i still have in the garage grace has is that not to i don't mean to interrupt you which i'm gonna have to do guys are gonna be like why do you keep stopping greg listen you have to stop craig if you want to say something because yeah. he will de- <laughs> <laughs> <No sense. laughs> so you just said something that i've only heard i've only heard another guy a regional guy say and that's skin in a window mm-hmm. and he's a high-rise guy you know what i mean he's from he was, was a high-rise guy from cleveland yeah kind of showed me the art and the ways of the unger zero degree handle he gave me my first one oh, yeah. um swivel lock right and he was like uh he was like uh a hey, um he goes i he goes i think i'm just gonna skin that window on the back of the house and i'm like what he goes not do it i mean i'm like why he's like because i can't get to it he goes we don't have anything to get to it we had five pieces we couldn't get this you know and we just told the lady so when you said skin it he was like that doesn't mean skip a window to me and i'm like wait a minute so you've heard somebody say that too then oh yeah <laughs> is that a regional thing or is that like a window cleaner like vernacular thing what it which is I that think it's, i think it's a window cleaner vernacular thing okay. it's it, you well just think about it what <clears throat> if you define the word to skin the skin is a layer mm. right an outer layer mm. and if you I, uh, if you hunt don't you Skin, skin, yeah, and you peel it off, yeah, and I, so I, I kind of use that. I go with that idea. That I'm gonna peel it off, like the window. I gotta peel it off and lift it off the house. Kind of. <coughs> what what is that doing? Is that doing a thing for you? Yeah, let me see. Let's pause this real quick for good. All right, we're back. That, sorry, but sorry about that, guys. I had technical difficulties there. I started doing the max headroom thing. You know what I mean? So I had to fix that real quick before we went on any further. <laughs> So you had, you broke in with the skinning and, Mm -hmm. and yes, all that, but yeah, that's where it kind of fizzled out for a second. But the, yeah, skin, if I'm going to peel the skin off, like I got a sunburn, you get the idea. I don't know (laughs) if I'm going to, if I, if I didn't mean to interrupt you with that, but I was just like, I can't, if I don't say something, I'm going to forget, you know what I mean? And I've only heard another dude from the Cleveland area call it skinning. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's the kind of stuff (laughs) I think interrupt because people, they should know some of this. If they can get that information, the history, this is, we need to learn from our history just as much as what is right in front of us. Right. And if, People misunderstand, use the wrong words, misconstrue things. Uh A slight little move of a word can change the dynamic of your whole life. Your whole life changes on a word. So, and I asked you this, and we kind of don't know how we got back on. I know how we got on. I'm talking to you, so we're, you know, like you're on a tangent. So, we were on the (laughs) But I, I was getting ready to, I asked you how like the transition between your grandfather and your father how that happened and you kind of went back to your grandfather real fast. well i went to the more of the scaffold yes the transition for my dad is interesting and in how things kind of play into the passion he had or did not have mm-hmm. because of timing and this is something i think is important too you'll understand during my grandfather's days on the residential you know on the buildings you got scaffolds and you got belts mm-hmm. And, you know, that was the primary, but the houses, which we transitioned, my grandfather transitioned to the residential side of things in going to Lakewood window cleaning, resident, buying it. He, I am going residential with this. He made right. a decision to do the storefront and that'll be the bread and butter ladders, the scaffolds. And then my dad starts growing up in this environment. And my dad was more into cars. Mm-hmm his passion tinkering and mechanical so i got i don't know maybe the gracefulness in the window cleaning not so much the dance but it translates through my window cleaning Mm -hmm. but the mechanical the tinkering my dad as he was growing up was building hot rods Mm -hmm. so 
this is kind of important because of what I do to my truck and where that comes from. Right. That. But right. my dad's growing up building hot rods. So I've got pictures of him in a leather jacket. He used to carry a knife. Everybody carried a knife. And he was right. racing the guys in Rocky River with the Porsches. Rich kids get a Porsche. My dad, they would, a sleeper. People who don't right. know what the, yeah. you know, it would take a station wagon, a Ford yeah. station yes. wagon. And they'd put a really big engine in, chain it down. You start it up, that torque bends the frame. Yeah. So you have to chain it down. Mark Tanner knows about this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Would appreciate it. But so my dad would go out to Rocker and they'd put a kill switch on the brake lights because in those days that was the sticks out there and the rich right. kids lived on the lake. Right. Well, I'll race you. <laughs> Station wagon. <laughs> I got a Porsche. Man. Then they win. They win money. He made a lot of money right. racing. In through, you fast forward, he went out to California and he raced out there. Mm -hmm. um, he knew the names Big Daddy Don Garlic, Shirley Muldooney, stuff. Those old folks like that. If anybody mm -hmm. knows drag racing, I'm, um, I, I, I'm, I have a particular affinity for it. I like it. It's cool. I think. Oh, yeah. Hot yeah. Rod, he comes out to visit me when I'm out there. I'm out there submersing myself in window cleaning, mm -hmm. which he hated. I left the family business, argued with him, but I went out there and he comes out to visit. Hey, let's go to Pomona, the National Hot Rod Museum. So we're walking around. And, hey, that's me. That's my car. There's a picture oh, of that's cool. in the Hot Rod Museum and a little thing in a display about the racetrack out there. And there's my dad racing and he's at the light. And then there's another picture. He's coming back down the side road, coming back at the end of the race. I got to come back. Right. And there, there's another picture where he's in, there's another race and he's in the, the background there. But I'm like, wow, that's actually really cool. Cause that he, is cool. That, that's what he really wanted to do. Yeah. And that's, he did that his entire life. He did the, his hot rod thing. Like I do water filtration. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a window cleaner. But mm -hmm. I tinker with water filtration like uh, like it's a hot rod, isn't that, you know, and I treat my truck. I want a nice truck. In that so same it, way, you're, you're, you're that same, that, that, uh, that thing, that's something you got from your father, but yeah. you're hot rod in a different way. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Well, you take I, my dad, yeah. that part of my dad, and then my grandfather, mm -hmm. he took the dance. And it tra that energy translated into his gracefulness and window cleaning. Mm -hmm. And he was, my grandfather was the true ladder jock. My dad, could my dad climb a ladder? Yeah. My dad was right. big and strong. Mm -hmm. My grandfather would have to have another guy put the ladders up. And then my grandfather would climb the ladder so much faster, clean the windows. Uh -huh. And like the Frank Ray style, my grandpa, yes. we learned to clean. I'm sorry, but this is pre-OSHA. Yeah, we learned yeah. to clean windows with both hands. You yeah. do one window on each side. And actually, wore when Boabs came out, I wore two Unger Classics. Mm. Then I, Unger, thanks a lot for not making a left-handed one or making your <laughs> Boab a, a more lefty-righty, user-friendly yeah. idea back then. Right. You know, they didn't really think the design out. And you should have talked to me, Unger, back then even. Yes. I don't know. You should have called yeah. me. Yeah. Elon Musk, you should call me. Seriously, we'll figure it out. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. You know what I mean. You've yeah. seen my operation here. Yes. You know what I mean. But that when you take what my grandfather took and the way he mm. developed into the ladders and the way he developed his system of moving around houses mm. and landing multiple houses on a street and saying to folks, hey, we're going to take our ladders and just – we're going to flip and spin them this way and put them on yours. And we're going to take yours apart so we don't have to come back the next day. And he would sign up. There was a brilliance to his method and flow in scheduling mm -hmm. and a brilliance to his method and flow in delivering the services, you know, and performing the field labor, you know. Mm -hmm. And really, again, he hired a guy, his only job, a big guy. It's of mice and men that you're mm -hmm. the big guy. Put the ladder up for me and mm -hmm. take it down. Now, my grandfather would climb up again, do the windows, but there were times where my grandfather would say, all right, you're going to put my ladder up the stack this time because they go from extensions to stacks. This is where my dad comes in and learns how to do laddering from a nut job. My dad learns how to do laddering from a nut job. And what does my dad at this time want to do? He wants to build hot rods, not learn laddering from a nut job. My grandfather that's my dad's perspective. I think my grandfather was brilliant. What did he do as a vaudeville performer up at the top of that wooden stack ladder cleaning the second floor window? He would just 
walk the window to walk the ladder to the next window and turn and put it against no shit the, i've like actually still. seen someone i've actually seen someone do that before Still walk the ladder. Yes, I've seen someone do that before. Yeah. Well, that was my grandfather. So they, he would do stuff like this. And mm -hmm. some of his guys, they would just, like, hey, but these people don't understand. These were different kind of ladders. Mm -hmm. Wooden ladders. Different kind of ladders, up. different kind of time, different kind yeah. of people. You different know what I mean? people. And yeah. my dad then came up and the, you know, then you had Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So... My dad got married. He started having kids, and Vietnam happened. Mm -hmm. So he was cleaning windows with my grandfather, building hot rods in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Now, he was, <laughs> he built hot rods. So who do you think was going to fix the Jeeps? My dad. That's right. what his job was, pretty much. He, you uh -huh. know, motorhead. But he had four children. Mm -hmm. And they said, no, we can't take you because they had a ruling at the time. He's got four children. If he goes, my mom was screwed because mm -hmm. she, my mom was also disabled. So there was nobody to really financially take care of our family. So my dad came back and what my, the foundation that my grandfather built with this business mm -hmm. was strong enough for my dad to come back and then take over okay. and start to transition and let my grandfather transition out. My dad had that strength, a big guy. My, and my dad, at that time, is tall as me now. Right. And, but my dad, I, I mean, when you looked at him, you're like, he's a Viking. Right. <laughs> he was so big, his arms were but, and tough yeah. in his younger days. And my dad was actually the guy that took over stacking the ladders for my grandfather to climb. Oh, okay. And then my dad learned how to climb the ladders on his own. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather then retired. My dad climbed the ladders. And he said, I'm not going to hire somebody because I'm big and strong. You know, mm -hmm. you know, it's weird because people don't realize that in the day, the belt work guys were tiny. And those that went to residential needed a ladder guy because the ladders were, you needed a ladder guy to move the ladder. You, it was a, it's like, I don't know if like, anyone's ever watching this has ever picked up five pieces of wooden stack before but um it ain't easy <laughs> oh, no the ladder the, the planks to go across the jacks to do the second third floor work mm -hmm. those i have one in the garage still i with two of them one in the garage one in grace's and i mean literally they are they're so extremely heavy grace mm -hmm. can't do that two right. two people she, they can't it's impossible they're not right. going to climb up I actually got my first stack ladder, wooden stack ladder. A guy that I was working with is like, he had, a you know, like three or four sets of wooden stack ladders. And he's like, if you can move that ladder from one end of the building to the next, as, as I'm going over these ledges, I'll let you have this ladder. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, but you got to be able to move all five pieces. I mean, I did it because I wanted it really bad, but that was extremely hard to do. <laughs> the, the 10 or the 12, what, what head did you have? The high head? Uh, I think it was a, I think it was a six foot head piece or a, it might have been an eight foot head piece. I got a couple high heads in the, in the garage. I think it was though. a six. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was a six foot wooden head piece. Yeah. It doesn't matter. They were so heavy. Yeah. It was super heavy. So heavy. And super heavy. Because it's wood, it's wood and brass. And you know what I mean? There's there was some brass on it to like you know here and there you know it's stabilizers so yeah. many components on those ladders but yeah so my dad you know that times were a changing so mm. planking was kind of moving its way out belt work moving its way out mm. and new technology <laughs> was funny because aluminum ladders mm -hmm. talk about new technology we're just making them out of aluminum now but they still have the same brass tools well what year would it have been 19 was it 1977 mm -hmm. that unger actually came into the picture or 75 77 or something like that wasn't it uh, i don't know the, yeah they really did people think I used that, to or wait unger goes back to the 50s maybe 1954 but i might be 50, thinking 57 i don't know but when you actually look at it you know, here in the USA, Unger, you know, their history here in the USA isn't as old as Ettore. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at Ettore and you look at Unger when they came in, and then you look with, when the brass started to change over to the ergonomic handles and all that, 
that was my dad's day. Mm -hmm. So they switched from brass. My grandfather went from steel to brass. Then my dad went from brass to the, I got, I still have every old green ergonomic handle, the, uh, the swivel lock, mm -hmm. the original swivel lock, all that stuff from those days. The, the original Sorbo Tricket, which that was like a, a new thing because they were a newer company mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And it's, what are you talking about? You just made something for the jealousies? How cool are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want one. We want two. Back then, the, mm -hmm. it, it was a spongy with the blue that slid on, mm -hmm. on for the, the soaker. It wasn't actual like soaker sleeves that go over the channels. Right. It was a standalone scrubber that they made as well with pads that went on. I still haven't seen those in a while. I don't know if they're around. Like some I've, I've actually never laid eyes on one. I, I, I Personally, I've never actually personally seen I, But I do know that's the, for the cleaning louvers, correct? The yeah, louver glass. the jealousies. The, yeah. yeah, those things are cool, man. Like that guy, I mean... He's got, he, I mean, just if you think about some of the things that he's come up with, you know, you know what I mean? Mr. Yeah. Serbo, Samuelson, you know, I mean, he, dude, that's some cool stuff. You know what I mean? Cool, cool stuff. Not just, yeah. I don't know, not just going sideways mm -hmm. or, I don't know, we could talk about that, but, you know, it's not worth talking about that kind of thing. You, you could go sideways with a lot of things. That's what happens on our industry. Right. Things go sideways too much. Then it's like, wait a minute, why don't you just take a little more time and ask a few more people, know the right people, learn who the right people are to ask. What are we needing? Because it's all right there. You go to like the, the pro group, the WCR pro group has it all right there. Every mm -hmm. one of us tells everybody what we want and need. Mm -hmm. It's it's all right there. And you can ask if you take a poll, do whatever you can. Whatever you want to know, it's all right I think, there. I'm going to be honest, I think, you know, I, I've spoken about this before. Now, Sorbo is, I feel like, um, a different scenario. I feel like, even though he's a major innovator and a, a huge company that everyone uses, he's still kind of, still, to me, like a mom and pop type of industry, you know, like part of our industry. Yeah. Places like, like Unger, for instance, you're probably not going to get too much feedback or try to get too much feedback from the guys that actually use it. Maybe Ederay, maybe more than Unger, I think, would listen to a little more window cleaner input. But Unger, they're probably just like, you know, hey, we're making shit. Buy it or don't buy it. You know what I mean? Still not the Germans. If you look at their <laughs> well, they have so many, so many facets to their their catalog. You know what I mean? It's not just, you it's know, janitorial. it's everything. It's, yeah. you know, there's that here in America, the whole Home services revolution, mm -hmm. do yeah. you know, good for that. But mm -hmm. you know what the bottom line is, is a lot of that really just fizzles out when it translates to the employee. Mm -hmm. You're not teaching them everything mm -hmm. properly. You're just overextending. And when you can't get the labor, then one or two people have to do it all. They're not skilled at everything. Right. That's great. But when you have that situation developing as we do in America, because everything's going too fast in a direction like that, bundling services, mm -hmm. but not training. They're doing a lot of systems and showing you how to systemize your business to handle I, that. I but, pressure wash, I pressure wash, window clean, I mow the lawn, I do I trim the bushes. I But who does that? It's yeah. The <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 And the employee. Now, you know, I, I think that when you look at the shows that we have, but look at how Unger's, I, this is, this is where I get in trouble. I mean, I got to be honest about Go that because you know what, honestly, it's where I'm at is it's all about the window cleaner. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about anything else other than window cleaning. When it, you know, people have to understand that this is, this is for us to advance better. Mm -hmm. This is our bodies. This is our families that are affected by this. So, yeah, I'm going to take this passionately and I call somebody out like Unger. You know what I want to see from them. And I've asked, I want to see the pictures from the huge convention of their booth. I want to see from their booth, from the outside perspective in. And I want to see from where they're sitting, looking out. And I want to see about one picture every hour of the trade show mm -hmm. from them in America at every show that they're at. And then right. I, when you look at the shows that they put on in Germany, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, well, if 
we're not that important if you're not going to listen to us because we we do different we have a different standard we're mm. the acme standard they're the euro standard our mm. acme standard applied to everything mm. and we adapted that way their euro standard now they're moving in certain factions across the pond they're going square lock mm. uh, okay well where does that apply to uh, you you know where <laughs> that's a whole other thing but you know the bottom line is is what Unger, you know, like you say, yeah. Sorbo, he comes over here. I at the huge, and I'm like, wait a minute, you guys have been around this long, and he's been around only this long, mm -hmm. and he, his booth looks like this, and your booth looks like that. You really mm -hmm. don't care, do you? Right. I so, when the, I mean the huge convention that you were, the I don't know, I what was it 19 or 18 in Branson? Branson? Yeah. yeah, you could definitely the the I was underwhelmed. I would, uh, I'm being <laughs> honest here, Unger, and I'm talking straight to you, Unger, where's the camera, I'm talking straight to you, your booth, we have pictures of your booth at the Branson mm -hmm. Convention. Mm -hmm. I am a window cleaner, I don't ever want to see that again at a convention, I'm not, who am I to really demand this or say anything, right. you know, I am a window cleaner, that's who I am, mm -hmm. and you know what, there, it was horrible, Yeah. It was, uh, come on, and uh, who was, I'm sorry, you know, uh, you know who I want to talk from, Unger? You bring somebody in. Are you in the family? Are you an actual window cleaner? I don't want an Unger representative in a suit who hasn't cleaned a window. <laughs> yeah. I don't want yeah. that yeah. as a window cleaner. I'm sorry. Right. I, I want to come. It's definitely. It was definitely, like I said, it was underwhelming. When I was like, you know, that was one of the things I was like, you know, there's Unger's going to have a booth here. You know, I'm an Unger guy. You know what I mean? Um, some people poo poo that and think, you know, only janitors use Unger tools, but whatever. Um, oh, you didn't even see all my Unger tools. That's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see part, you, there were the whole soap area. We didn't even go over there. Yeah, I know. But, I, I, you know, I, I figured, uh, I figure, uh, I, I would, you know, I, you know, I'll say this now so that way it's recorded. I definitely would like to come up and not, I not necessarily clean windows, but I would definitely like to come up and vlog style, like, if you guys would be cool with that and me kind oh, of yeah. me tag along and just like shoot video of you guys, your day, that would be cool. Oh, yeah. We can pick some good days, right jobs to do. We got yeah. the Franklin Castle that we're going to look at again. We've done that and under new management. That, that's a, supposed to be one of the hauntedest, the most hauntedest the, or yeah. hauntedest. Is that a word, hauntedist? I, hey, we're we're gonna roll with it, brother. That's it's hey, it is now. It's a word now. Oh, but wonderful. it like anything like that that you feel like you know you have coming up. Just it's on wax now. We've got it, we've got it recorded here. Like if anything like you feel like oh man, it'd be you know, and it, they they'd be cool with me filming you guys cleaning it, dude. I would love to come up and do that. I always say I have a project. I kind of have a project going on behind the scenes that I'm doing, and I would love to do that. I would love to shoot video for like not even necessarily that Franklin Castle, but just shoot video of your day. That would be oh cool. Gosh, that would be. I, I would always love to do that. If we could figure out if I could have somebody else who just travels around and shoots the videos, takes the pictures, and a right. traveling minstrel. Right. Yeah. Uh, traveling minstrel. Yeah. Play me some music. Yeah, play me some music, sir. Just in the background. <laughs> right. Play something pleasant that goes along with the birds. Doesn't yeah. like yeah. the birds, but go along with the birds. Right. When the train comes, give me a little. <clears throat> if it's a guitar. Yeah, so know. your father comes back from Vietnam. Well, he, he kind of, you know he never, they never well, shipped him out. Never he, shipped he him out. He boot camp and, you know. They gave they, him the old go home. So, yeah, they um, gave the, the heave ho. So he comes, he, he doesn't, he's not able to go back to, he's not able to enlist and go to Vietnam. He comes home um, after boot camp and, you know, starts doing the window cleaning thing. I mean, I'm sure he did that for, I mean, he did that for, that was his job, correct? That's what Still, he did. Yeah, I'm trying to think how old he was. Yeah, he did that, and it was stagnant for him because the, you know, the ergonomic handles, like I said, were the mm -hmm. only thing that really changed. There were a few things. Mr. Longarm back in those days, which mm -hmm. I still love to this day. Mr. Longarm's still one of my favorites, mm -hmm. but I don't know why. But and I still love them. They they were innovators mm -hmm. in the zero degree technology, mm -hmm. and I think they did it even better than Unger, to tell you the truth. Yeah. But you know, that's a whole other style of window cleaning. I'm trying to revive my Mr. Longarm techniques with their, their that, oh, 
their, their whole system was pretty ingenious. The way you did your up and down movements in their pole, the, the pro curve design, the pro curve system. Mm-hmm. I still do you have. have that. Do you have a pro curves? I got the system. I have oh. the newer pro curve pole. My dad's old pro curve poles. Anybody that knows those fiberglass poles, after time they dry out. They started to crack, so I ended up just throwing them away because they were oh. worthless. Right. But uh, you know, I got a new pro curve shorty pole. Oh. I still have my original pro curve handles. I got a couple of them. Oh, still have the packaging that it came in with the soaker that clipped onto that. I would that love handle. to get my hands on, or not even hands, but I would love to see that. I would love to see that. So the you uh, know, my style, that's kind of like. I mean, if you see the way I clean windows, I'm kind of a washer and pull kind of guy. That's yeah. kind of right up my alley. You know what I mean? The so. pole work, yeah, for pole work, they were they. It was really cool, especially for tr- lower transom work. I kind of low ground level, lower transom, like mm-hmm. the reverse transom, the low stuff, and the way you could, uh, it just it's that. It, yeah. Anybody that uses a zero degree understands. Right. Yeah. And the pro curve gives you the ledging ta- technology right. back then. Right. Then that we didn't have because the ledger hadn't come out at that. It, that was something to develop it, that started coming out at that period of time. Uh-huh. But for my dad, it was like, okay, yeah, these things we're not really applying them. Yeah. The pole work, but we're still using the wood ladders and now the aluminum ladders started to come out and we got so, the aluminum ladders and it made it a little easier, but it really still, you know, those aluminum ladders, they're still tough. Now I came in. We, I, I grew up and transitioned, still using woods. Mm. I didn't get my first set of aluminums. My dad never got aluminum stacks. Right. And I never had them until I moved out to California. Uh-huh. And that's a story. I worked for some, oh, some just unscrupulous characters who <laughs> stole a name from a company in. Las Vegas, and (laughs) then they were running, and they really were just two guys. This was, it's another thing that upsets me about the industry, gets me in a lot of trouble, is the difference between a window cleaner and an entrepreneur in our industry. Yes, and I feel like, you know, without going too deep into it, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in our industry because um, it's, the one industry where it has the least amount of overhead, but yes. unfortunately, um, there's a lot of bad work that happens and unscrupulous, uh, you know, like you said, unscrupulous shit that goes on. Now, some of those may turn into window cleaning companies, but they don't start out that way. <laughs> you know? Yeah, these guys were, yeah, yeah. You know, they were shady and... Yeah. When things fell apart, I told I went over to the dude's house. And he said, "Literally, here's how much you owe me. Now we're <laughs> going to settle this here and now." Right. And I, you know, I says, "You, you've got to, you've got to satisfy this amount to, to my liking." Mm-hmm. And I come from Ohio, mm-hmm. and we're in the Rust Belt. You know this. We grew up Danny Green. The name Danny Green, kill the Irishman. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, from here. So yeah. we live this daily as kids that that yes, just, sir. Like, just like the cold war just like uh-huh. thinking we yeah, we're gonna have to hide under the desk because they're gonna bomb us uh just like vietnam we're gonna get drafted and m16 mm. is gonna rip us to shreds right. just like every other scare we grew up with and threat we had danny green blown up in a car yeah. not too far from here yeah and you, you as a kid you're like am i too close to this car Right. <laughs> is, this, is this a car I should be close to? That's a great movie for anyone that's uh, um, listening to this. Go check it out if you've never seen it. Kill the Irishman. That's a so, really good. That's a really good movie. It's it's it, it kind of shows the metal. The Irish side says that you know testing the metal. It shows mm-hmm. the you know the Irish and the Italians here. The, I'm the, Irish, by the way. Yeah, I'm half Irish and German. Uh, on the other side, German Slovak on the other side, but I, you know, that's a whole nother thing we could digress into. I think that some of my folks were right across the literal waters from Frank Grave and all those folks yeah. up there, somewhere thereabouts, because we, that side of the family comes from the port of Danzig area or port of Donsk. Uh-huh. And, but the borders back and forth, Poland, Germany, you know, uh, right. history, who knows, but there's a whole story of that. Yeah. The whole other thing you talked about the everything man that I am, but see my should... Jennifer's my my wife's her family she's Czech 
So Czechoslovakia, there's a lot yeah. of that in Cleveland. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's but a lot of that in Cleveland. <laughs> back to the Kill the Irishman movie, that gives you a little idea of the Cleveland attitude yeah. and vibe <laughs> that I work. We are, we are literally, you go just a few streets down and we're in Cleveland. Mm. And if you go down our street to the where the CBS is, that used to be a restaurant, very big. And that was a mafia restaurant. Yeah. It's right down the street Cleveland, from our uh, Cleveland's a rough area. Oh, it's, you've got even, to be tough. Even, it, even still to this day. <laughs> Look, got to be tough. It yeah. is, it's rough, but yeah. yeah. So my father and I, we, you know, by the time, I mean, we've gone from vans and trucks, mm -hmm. transitioned to the residential, mm -hmm. became residential specialists. My dad just kind of maintained the idea of the business. He really didn't grow the foundation, mm -hmm. but there wasn't really that revolution to expand any ways other than what we were doing because we only had ladders to get to the windows to the second and third floor. And the, I want to say, you know, I'm a grandfather. I'm in middle school. My grandfather passes on. I'm not ready yet to go into the field the way right. my dad needs me. And my, so his best friend, my uncle, uh, you know, this scattered couple of guys here and there for a few years until I get old enough to start handling myself better, mm -hmm. starting in the garages at age 12-ish, the summer. I'm mm -hmm. in October, so I started high school, I was already 18 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, now back in the day, I would have been able to drink, but you know, because drinking right. at age 18, <laughs> right. and that changed only a few years before my time, I was right. a pissed, but you know. <laughs> So the idea was that, you know, my grandfather, had kind of transitioned out my father this is the 70s you know we would have been going into the 70s i was born in 1969 my brother in 1970 so my grandfather wouldn't have been in the meat of the vietnam war anyways when he was in because of the timing of the children right. he was but you know when he came back you're looking at the 70s and anybody that looks up history go to the 70s the music the vibe you know, bowling here was big. So yeah, he was. He had kids. I come from a. I come from a bowling family. <laughs> oh yeah, he had kids, and right up the street from our house, mm -hmm. which is right up the street from where we live right now, mm -hmm. which is right down the street from where my grandfather bought the house, was May Hall, and back then it was a dance hall turned into a bowling alley. Cool. Two floors, twenty lanes, up and down bar. Uh -huh. They butchered it to this day, but. My dad also, so he cleaned windows. He worked up there as a bartender, had the nightlife, did the whole bowling, the Peterson classic. I've got, oh, yeah, I got so many, I got bowling shirts, pictures of him, you know, the trophy with the yeah, 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 yeah. classic yeah. sign behind, the <laughs> guppy troop with those pants during right. the 70s. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, Pete Weber, you know, just <laughs> the big hook. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're, we're growing up in the 70s, which right. these younger folks, they don't understand how exciting we're talking bowling. This isn't curling. Right. This isn't Canadian style. <laughs> right. yeah. Curling. Let's bring this. No, we're talking indoor. We're, we're, this is more challenging than just grooming. We're talking, you got to throw this glossy, oily ball down a lane and hit all 20 pins. Right. Yeah. You kidding me? With gutters on this, it goes in the gutter all the time. It's hard work, man. <laughs> what made it, the 70s, what, what made these guys able to do that with the precision with that ball and that, that, my dad showed me this. It's it's all in the pants, polyester trousers with a flare at the bottom for that movement. Yeah, definitely. Movie. That's it's a prerequisite. Lots of movement down there in the legs to get that, that, you know that, it's that almost that Frank Rave on the right. left, yeah. Michael Gordon, when they deliver that ball and it's going down, yeah. the arms are out, yeah. wingspan, with those polyas. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I got to pull those. We'll do a squeegee live show. With you got to have, hey, you got to wear polyester pants the next time you come on the podcast. Oh, you, you, <laughs> that's a whole nother I'm going to be extremely disappointed if you come on the show again and you ain't got some polyester pants, dude. You make a note to ask oh, Grace man. about the, the old lady polyester <laughs> and she will just turn red and tell you in stories right <laughs> it, ex it explains it all it explains it all but yeah so back to we i my my dad when i got into it we kind of i don't know things were a little different my passion was more like my grandfather's i looked at things like how can i set this up and 
oh, my dad's just doing this. No, that's not efficient. That doesn't flow very well. You're doing it wrong. That, that's a weakness, and we should make that a strength. Wait, we, we, I was always analytical about it from the get-go. He stuck me at age 12. You have to go in the garage. Uh -huh. You've got to move all this crap, what's in front of the window, to get to a window that has a curtain and a blind covered with spider webs and dead <laughs> bug carcass. And then you get that all taken down. You clean it all off because he says, clean all that stuff. Right. Clean it all off. Pull the rod. Clean the rod. Clean all the bug stuff mm -hmm. around. And if they had wood shutters that, that were crusty yeah. and nasty and dried out, you're like, oh. I am but the same way. I can't. Like my, I mean, the, the, every, there's always the one window on every house, maybe two. Sometimes there's four in the garage, the garage windows that have the bug carcasses and the, you know what I mean? The spiders have been having droppings on the sill for, you know, five years. Oh, I cannot, yeah. I cannot bring myself not to clean that entire area. I feel like it's like. Man, I'm, do, I'm already doing the window. I'm just going to get everything wet and scrub all this down real quick. You know what I mean? It's just, you know. <laughs> the most, but it's funny because he's like, you cannot come into the house until you can make this look perfect. Right. And that was the hardest window to do. Yep. Literally the hard, and mm -hmm. you learn to have patience yep. because you're cussing. I've got to move the lawnmower. I've got to move this. Move <laughs> right, right. Their kids have a better bike than me. I'm using my <laughs> sister's bike. Yeah. I'm wearing my sister's shoes. Why me? <laughs> right? Why me? Hey, why me? <laughs> yeah. It's honest. It's yeah, the truth. that is the I'm truth. I'm a kid. I'm 12. And I'm yeah. like, you're putting me in the garage. I was not enthusiastic about that. But when you look back, I understand it now. I'm like, you know what? He's like, you know what? I, you're the type of guy that wants to get to this level the mm -hmm. fastest. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the best example I can put you in, the best scenario, the best example I can find to put you in to get you where you want to be. And I'd clean that. I'm like, I want to be in the house with you guys. I want to be up on the ladder. Right. But you're not allowed till you make this look good. All right, you suck. I'll make it look good the first time. I'm going to get on that ladder. Right. I forced my dad to let me grow into the business he fought me the whole way fought me the whole way but <laughs> that resistance you know what then what did it do it just made me it spurred me tested that my much more determined more determined yes. to dig deeper and yes. just do it and then you know how this translates to ladder work which we very rarely find somebody i don't care how strong you are because i know some of the guys at, at that rolling event in the evening one of my mm. friends here I mean, this guy's a bodybuilder. He's one of the guys I ain't talking, oils up the body, puts on the slinky sack, and he's on the stage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, my arm is bigger <laughs> than the yeah. world. Yeah. But I mean, he's big, <laughs> big and strong and uh -huh. conditioned, and every day in the gym, yeah. he's over 60. He's like 66. He goes to the gym every day. Wow. He, people look at him, they're like, you look like you're. You, you look like the, you, you can tell he's older, but like right. when you actually look at him, you're like, my God, there's 40 year olds. That, that don't look, look that like good. Gonna die. I'm 40. I'm 40. So, and I don't look that good. <laughs> you, know, you look at this guy and you're like, how, where do you, where, you know, where did, how is this even? Yeah. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger doesn't look good that right. good. And he right. was, you know, how do you, but he, I don't know. It's a weird thing. He's a window cleaner. That's the difference. He's a window cleaner okay. because there's a certain kind of strength that you keep and maintain. But mm. even with all that conditioning, mm. he can't handle himself on ladders like I can. Right. Because there's a different kind of inner strength that it takes to be a ladder jock. Well, it's and, uh, it's almost like a, like a muscle memory thing almost. You know what I mean? It's like, you know... Um, like most guys, like if you like say 10, 10 block for a brick mason, that's a different kind of strength than, yeah. you know what I mean? Like going to the gym and that, doing it, curls and bench presses. That's completely different. There's work strength and then there's gym strength. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? You know what but I mean? Then our own physical limitations mm -hmm. to our strengths. Now me, I just, I'm basically, if you measure, I'm five foot ten and a half. Whatever that does to my reach, mm -hmm. the way our ladders are built and designed, the, the actual height, mm -hmm. I am positioned perfectly for stacking. 
-hmm. at my height. You can actually be too tall or too short right. for the <laughs> yeah. actual yeah. height, and it's an awkward stack if you're too tall or too uh, short. Right. I'm just somehow positioned just right. And then the weight ratio that I carry mm -hmm. to be able to effortlessly glide up the ladder, you know, that yeah. my weight ratio plays in my favor. Now, Grace, she can't get the ladder up, but yeah, she's she was talking up about a little that. better than me. Yeah. So a little more strength and speed going up, but she is more fearful. Uh -huh. So she's still clinging and shaky. Uh -huh. But it's like when when you actually figure out how to let go and yeah. just do it gracefully, like that's uh that's uh an acquired like that's something that takes a little time to yeah to get around. You know what I mean? It's, it takes yeah. some time to get around that. Not just owning the ladder. There is yeah. so much more to it. It's it, The ladder has a soul. It, if you don't believe it has a soul, it has a soul. It's going to move and flex, and it's going to move with your energy. And I have an outdated ladder that I use. Well, people would consider it outdated. Like, I can't believe you still use that ladder. I'm like, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I've been using this ladder the entire time I've cleaned windows, which is 20 years. When I bought the business from the guy, I was like, the only thing I want is the ladder and the IPC hydro cart. You can keep everything else. <laughs> He's like, why do you want he goes, why, why do you want that ladder? I was like, because I just trust it. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I just trust that ladder. <laughs> My stacks, uh, that window cleaning company, the shady mm -hmm. guys, that had to be, let's see, around 2001-ish. Yeah, about, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, 99 to 2000, somewhere no, what, no, it was before that. I already got going down there in 2000. Mm -hmm. I stayed, got, it could have been, yeah, because 9-11, I had those, so beginning of 2001. So we'll say 2001. So that's, you know, we're looking at 22 years right there. And they were a used set of stacks when I got them. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old they were when I got them. Could have been right. five, six years. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, my stacks are probably almost going to be 30 years old, a few more years. I've got a new replacement set and everything, but they still have life. And I, they're not, I know my ladders. Mm -hmm. I probably know my ladders better than anybody else that's going to inspect them and tell me whether they're good or not. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I know I've got a little life, but I even told Grace, I said, they, they're, they're ready. They're, I'm ready to transition. I've, I've had the new set for a couple of years. Right. I'm not retiring them until they're ready. They're not, it's just like me. I'm, when right. they're ready, they're I don't broke know. In. They're broke in. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but broke in. <laughs> I, am the, I am the certifier of my right. ladders. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. 40 plus years on them. <laughs> yeah. There isn't anybody that can certify. I don't care how much you go into the classroom and OSHA can pay as much money to teach you whatever you want to learn. Mm. But I'm going to tell you, I know my ladders better than anybody at OSHA knows my ladders. I'm willing. Come on over. I don't, I don't doubt that a bit to be yeah, quite honest. That's, that's the same way with me and my equipment. I, nobody knows it like I know it. You know what I mean? We should know it yeah. for our own benefit. It's the and way safety. you should. Yeah. That's the way you should operate. You should know your stuff inside and out. Um, that's yeah. why I never really, I mean, I do a little bit of pressure washing here and there when a customer like requests it, but I've got, you know, I know I've got friends who are like, Hey man, you should do more of this and you do more of that. I'm a window cleaner. You know what I mean? If I do something like pressure washing, I don't, I'm not enjoying myself when I'm doing that. I mean, is it money? Yeah. Is it money? Yes. But am I, do I like being dirty and stinking like bleach all day? No, I don't. I don't like that at all. I don't yeah. like being wet all day. I, don't, I just don't like, like that. No, I don't know. I got squirt guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'm will i not saying I'm above it. I mean, I'll do it. I mean, I've got plenty of big pressure washing jobs that I do on a yearly basis, but I don't like doing it. I dread that. I mean, it's just, it's for the bottom line only. It's not for my satisfaction. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm a window a cleaner. <laughs> yeah, different flow to it. But, yeah. you know, like, just think about it. Like, do I like playing with squirt guns? Yeah, I did when I was a kid, right. but it wasn't that big of a thing in that <laughs> respect that I wanted them in the guns because right. the guns are the jets mm -hmm. for us in the water fed. But that's kind of like the dance could take one person in window cleaning direction this way mm -hmm. dance could go into a chef in a kitchen and they can move around in another way mm -hmm. you apply anything to anything you know for the power wash guys there's some guys i know that they're like i love the power washing flow and i'm like you really love that Oof. flow of that and then yeah. you know the <laughs> but all right i can i can understand the systems the right. just to put it together uh -huh. but the actual labor i'm like where's the dance you're just you're just squirting 
but the transformations are amazing though i'll give them that that but the transformations are amazing I, you know that's super excellent but the actual art though the 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 art of it uh well, it, yeah. there's some guys I've seen that they like, they take it to that level. Yeah. But it's oh, definitely. Like, uh, some of us, you can look at some window cleaners and say the same thing. Like, yeah. wait, that's not really how you do it. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, just, you know, yeah. But if that's what you're doing, that's right. But, you know, how many years did we see people, and even to this day, water-fed pole, mm-hmm. they buy the water-fed pole, and they, I say this, I, I'm just being silly, but they think there's a magical thing inside the pole itself that filters the water, they think, wait a minute, I used the pole, but I did it. Well, how'd you use it? I plugged the pole into the water. What water? The water on the house. You mean the spigot? Yeah. Do they have a well? Yeah. Well, okay. So <laughs> yeah. You're just with the well water's going through <laughs> there and right. through your holes. Yeah. Are your jets clogging up? Oh, right. Yeah, they are. Well, hmm. I actually, you know, had a, a customer, um, just a couple of years ago that was like come out and she's like or she's like i don't have that much water in my in my cistern for you to be uh using the water like that i wish you would have said something i would have had the water guy come and fill the cistern up and i'm like well i brought my own water she was like oh you're not using hose water i'm like no the water's purified i you know there's uh, and then i had to, and she's like you know kind of looks at me and then i walked her over and showed her what was going on on the back of the truck she's like oh well i she goes i never she goes i just thought it was regular water i was like no no that's not the way that's done you know what I mean? well, <laughs> it's not they, the way it works <laughs> it's not the way that works tucker there's a process <laughs> yeah tucker aluminum poles you know we go back kind of go back to where I come in and start learning ladders, wood ladders. Mm -hmm. I don't get my first set of aluminum stacks till around 2000, Mm -hmm. you know, 2001 to give perspective. At that point in the year 1999, Mm 2000 ish, we were still going strong with that's I learned on Tucker gold aluminum poles. That's what I learned on. And you know this because I think you have one somewhere behind your garage you said one day a long time ago an Ettore aqua clean yellow yes i have i have i the first pole i used was one of those tucker aluminum poles which i fucking hated with a passion and then he's like well i got this pole and then he brought the fiber the aqua glass pole out and i was like you got to be kidding me this thing is cool and then we went to use it one time and we had to stand up this 48 feet tall Oh, it, as soon as yeah, but we're, so yeah, it's we're, collapsed. It's it's the length of my shop out back. It's like twenty <laughs> some feet long, collapsed, yeah. and that thing it like you you had need like two strong men and a boy to stand that thing up. Oh, you know what I mean? And it's fiberglass, so it's, yeah, it's dude. Flexed and bent and yeah. started crumbling yeah. and deteriorating. <laughs> All that fiberglass be in your hands. hands. <laughs> oh, no way, man. Yeah, I I, I ended mm. up giving. I, I I had that Ettore Aqua Clean, the yellow one, uh-huh. and in Tucson, Arizona, I gave that to another window cleaner. Uh-huh. He was like, "This is the greatest thing." I'm like, "Dude, I just cursed you." Yeah, you don't have no idea. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah he wanted no it. Idea. I'm like, "No, I'm gonna throw this away because I hate this thing." Mm-hmm. But I told, I did tell him, wrap it with hockey tape, uh-huh. and because of the dry heat. Hockey tape doesn't respond well to dry heat. It's designed to respond well to water. Right. That's why we like to use it on all our window cleaning tools, mm. on our handles and everything. But down there, try it out. I'm like, that's the best thing because it gives that little tack and then you get a good grip. Mm. But, you know, so <laughs> that, but then the other one. Just ones, the changes, the changes. I mean, I, I, you know, it's one thing to sit here and listen to dudes talk about it. It's another thing to have experienced it and have watched the progression over the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. But like you said, even just the last five years, the technology, I mean, it's definitely, I wouldn't say it's leveled the playing field because I'm a firm believer that if you're watching this and you know, you say you've never cleaned a window in your life, you own a pressure washing company or you're the lawn care guy and you think, Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to go out and buy one of these machines that they're talking about and become a window cleaner. That's not going to work. I'm just a firm believer in that. I've seen it on repetitive basis. Guys buy water-fed pole systems. They're going to add that as a service, and they end up giving it up because people start complaining because you don't know how to clean a window. You have to. It's, you have you to have know to how the and, process. It, 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 it is simple as it is to learn. 
learning how to do it by hand traditionally is, in my opinion, of the utmost importance. If you do not know how to get a window cleaned traditionally, it's going to affect the way you clean windows with a pure water system using pure water and a water fed pole. It's not going to turn out as good as a guy that knows how to clean a window with a squeegee. It's just not going to turn out as good because he knows what to avoid, what to look for because he's cleaned a window before. Well, you know? look at that. <clears throat> Nowadays, what they're coming into, mm -hmm. we came in now, and you'll, another one you'll know back then. And when folks listen to this, you got to think I'm talking about the year 2000. We're not talking the 70s when my dad was coming up or even 1935 when my grandfather got the whole thing rolling. We're talking about the year 2000, Y2K, and we're still using aluminum. Now we're transitioning into fiberglass and hybrid poles, mm -hmm. fiberglass and aluminum. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, yeah, that was smart. But then the wind spray unit, which I think you also have an old wind spray. It, it's water fed in a bag. I do. Black bag, yeah. brush, acne. It just screwed yeah. right onto your pole, Acme. It's the Edray <laughs> Standard Adapt, yeah. Angle Adapt, with yeah. a brush. Man, how do you know that I have one of those? You told me this. You were, you were talking about it on the podcast. Show. Yes, you're right. <laughs> You had made, man, I brought it up and you're like, I that's have right. one. That's right. And now, you were saying that, that hybrid pole. I, now, I have my four, that it's a 40 foot, uh, well, 48 foot yellow fiberglass pole. Like every section is fiberglass, but the very top of it, the very top four, two foot of the pole is a carbon fiber piece about that tall. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's about that long. They but went every, from hybrid fiberglass aluminum hybrid mm -hmm. to carbon fiber fiberglass but hybrid. just that amount of carbon fiber was so fucking expensive you know what I mean? oh so expensive God, that bowl was so expensive you but our industry is relatively small so you have to consider to break into an industry like this with a new now, material or a new idea yeah you you literally it's almost impossible because you know, you went from such a small industry that was set in their ways in mm -hmm. those days to now. How many folks have just lost the bank trying to make a mold that they realize, ah, uh, that we screwed up there? Yeah, that hydro cart and two poles, that was probably around $13,000 of an investment. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And think about, think about that. Yeah, the thirteen thousand. Then you could buy back then. What you could do now? I mean, you could do you a, a you, work truck. Yeah, 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 dude. Tents. It's crazy, man. I mean, yeah, that's six, seven, eight grand for an S ten <clears throat> work truck. Right. I'm not it's saying crazy. that window cleaning, pure water wise, is like like dirt cheap now. But when he bought all that stuff, and I didn't believe him, he's like, "No, man, this is was." I mean, that hydro cart was like six over six grand. Yeah. And that pole was around three grand. I mean, th that shit was not cheap. It was not cheap back then. I was oh, definitely, yeah. definitely surprised how much he, money he had tied up in all that shit. You know what I mean? I think about how much money in my garage now, mm -hmm. usable Tucker aluminum, the old gold. You got a nice wall of of poles there. I was when I walked in. I was I of course that's where I gravitated to instantly. I was like, oh man, oh, look yeah. at all this cool shit. You know what I mean, I'm like, oh, I had that one. I had that one. You know, what I mean? I've used one of those before. You know, what I mean? <laughs> and to hang out with dudes that like, there's a like the guy that rolled. Uh, what was his name from Pennsylvania? Uh, uh, Mark came in from Pennsylvania. Yes, and he's only came. been cleaning for a very short time. Yeah, you know what I mean. And he's like, like, kind of looking puzzled. And I'm like, man, you have no idea how good you've got it right now. Oh, you came God. in at the perfect time. <laughs> oh, you know, to, to be exposed. <clears throat> that's that wall of history up there because mm -hmm. I've got poles, the Tucker Illumina. Mm -hmm. I've got the, how many, I got three or four different generations of clamps. Oh yeah. On those alone and modifications to bring those up to the current day. So mm -hmm. we're, uh, Grace and I are talking. A lot like, of hockey right, tape got, guys. A lot of hockey got, tape. <laughs> what's that? A lot of hockey tape. <laughs> oh gosh. But I, what I've got to do is that's weird because the, the history, mm -hmm. putting back the history, but being like my dad, you go back to him, the hot rod thing. When he built a hot rod, he did not put it on a trailer, drive it to a show and pull it off and park it. Mm -hmm. He drove it. He was part right. of the good guys. Right. 
if you are a hot rod, I know exactly who you, yeah. would know. Yes, yes. And so he would travel around and, and he would drive his. And I'm like, oh, man, he had a sedan, a 54 Chevy sedan delivery wagon, Phoenix mm -hmm. delivery wagon. I wish I could have at the time when he passed on uh, purchased that. But uh, with a young child, nowhere to put it, mm -hmm. I could not. I do often think one day if I could find that. I would turn that into the ultimate water-fed traditional window cleaning vehicle, just Dude. in honor of what he put into Dude, that. In your town, I'm. I gotta tell you, I'm super envious of the area, kind of like you live in. Like it's that that strip right there on six. Like once you get up by Daystar and all that yeah. stuff, you know what I mean. And melt, melt, just that area right there. Do you do a lot of work there? Or? Yeah, up and down. That's Detroit, and then the other main. There's Madison. Because I'm driving around, you know, when I was up there on my way to meet you at the brewery, um, I was like, man, there's a lot of clean windows around here. I wonder if Craig did those. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Quite a few through town. Right. Right. Central's around here, fish. But you know what? Yeah, we ah, Central. Here, uh. my, my grandfather, I mean, we, in his day, mm -hmm. they'd have dedicated, we, it's all week routes. Mm -hmm. I was doing storefronts. So we almost, I mean, we literally almost had everything in town. Mm -hmm. Then my dad's days, two days a week only mm -hmm. storefronts, all day, just two days a week. I'm like, whew. Then, you know, the routes where the regional stuff my dad dipped in, which I'm like, forget this. Drop these banks, home federals going out and doing them in a little regional circuit. I'm like, drop this. You're doing exact opposite of what your dad would have done. Mm -hmm. And we I'm gonna, about that. I'll be honest, the last couple of years, I kind of got away from... I used to have a really good route that I had built up and it was I when I purchased the business uh, and when I was working for the business, I, I kind of helped build, you know what I mean? And um, I kind of got away from it with the COVID and everything. I kind of got away from it. I was like, I'm just going to focus on residential. But now that things, I wouldn't say necessarily are getting bad, but the, the, the way the economy is right now, yeah. I've kind of found myself um like i'm i'm answering more of those calls and taking those bids where i maybe a couple maybe a year or two ago i wouldn't be i've actually picked up quite a few storefronts this year in the in the this winter i which is rare for me normally i'm just like you know i just don't have the time you know and i just honest with them you know what i mean but now i'm like you know might be kind of nice to build me up a nice little route just in case shit goes sideways. It's, right? it is, <laughs> yeah. it's diversifying. It's yes. Your yes. Just, I'm not going to go really crazy cool. like I had before, but I'm going to, I'm going to get it really close to that. Maybe half to what, half of what I used to do is probably what I'm kind of yeah. shooting for. Grace and I, we look at it. Okay. We need to balance. We do. Mm -hmm. What is it we offer? Now, we don't call storefronts commercial work. It's mm -hmm. We separate commercial, low rise, high rise. I'm the same as you, yes. You know, you know strip malls. We Storefronts, the them. little tiny jobs. The commercial jobs are like the big jobs. Those are nice paychecks. <laughs> you, you low know. rise, high yeah, rise. Yes, yes. But, uh, you know, or you're talking industrial, commercial parks. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got strip malls. That's mm -hmm. a distinction. But storefronts, we do the little ones like you saw. Madison and Detroit go through town, mm -hmm. and Detroit goes through Rocky River a ways, and that's got another strip till you get right. to the freeway, right? And head on out that way. That just that that little piece of Route Six between I love. There is, I challenge anyone. That is one of the coolest little strips of highway in the United States, right there. That running right along the coast of Lake Erie. Beautiful, big, old school homes and buildings oh, yeah. right on the lake shore. It's absolutely beautiful. It goes all the way around yes. Canada, and when we were and, younger, su we were and super old. community too, like yeah. super, su like really good community, like tight knit communities. It's cool as shit, man. But so this should, is a cool area yeah. to live in, but unfortunately, it's super freaking shitty about four months out of the year. <laughs> well, you know what? You got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> take the good with the bad, yeah. but we also have the Ohio Valley, the Metro Park system. Yes. That connects in the Ohio River and Edgewater. So mm -hmm. the way we are, when we get winter, it's mm -hmm. not this it's not that bad. It's really you, you, if, you can, if you can enjoy nature year-round. Yes. We have some of the best nature. the The lake when it's frozen, mm -hmm. the when it's I don't know. There's so much beauty in it. 
Mm-hmm. But again, we're out there cleaning and we get to enjoy that in the winter if you're able to see it, if you're able to tune into it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's so interesting, but yeah, it's part of the magic of it. Yeah. It is yeah. the passion that fuels yeah. the culture. I don't even want to call it a culture. It's just, it's, it's just. Well, I think it, that's, I think that's, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that's a safe thing to say. Cultures, I could feel like that's, that's a safe bet. I, I feel like it, it is. Yeah, from the outside perspective, yeah. we are a little cult-like. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Look at the, uh, up here. <laughs> yeah. We go knee-deep into the art and the, you know, that side of it, just like you guys do. That is mm-hmm. just a, a, as big a part of this for me to teach Grace and, and even Tegan when she comes up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hey, you've got to look at this, you know, whatever job you do, there's you've got to find the the strengths, the weaknesses, mm-hmm. but there is passion that you yes. can create. And that that's can... that's really, um, you know, like the foundation of squeegee life. That's really, I mean, that's the passion. You know what I mean? That's that's what squeegee life is really. That's what we all. That's what I started this for. Is just the passion for because, um, like I said last night on the podcast, <clears throat> um you know, window cleaning, like changed my life. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I was, I worked in the construction trade and, um, you know, I built homes and that was cool and everything, but, you know, I kind of like, you know, went from builder to builder and, you know, just like always dealing with bullshit and, you know, just by happenstance, just the fact that I wasn't afraid to get in a lift and, you know, get on a ladder. They're like, Hey man, you want to come help us? We cl- we're cleaning windows. And I'm like, what? And they're like, yeah. So, and then I started doing that, and then I just the freedom and the, the different place, different, you know what I mean? Just it was always something new, and it just it really did change my not only my life but but my family's life as well. So there's a genuine love for what I do. You know what I mean? So yeah, it gives to us. It's the energy yeah. that gives to us, and we put the energy back in. That's yeah. like. When I and that and if we're, wherever there's yeah like you like you said with the flow that the there's a little bit i mean it's when there's passion in something and then it can be it's a there's a culture you know what i mean there's yeah. definitely a culture window cleaning I mean, there's a different look yeah at our yeah look at our shirts this is what i wear <laughs> yeah. daily yeah. Yeah. right I mean, I find <laughs> pictures and put them on yeah and yep. we don't have you know every they wear where do you shirts. get that done at like you like <laughs> I, that's this is one of the things that I like about you is the fact that and I don't know if it's necessarily like you go out of your way to be this way but you are definitely you're like do things the way that it used to be done but I mean you're also really on like I really like this new stuff but you always try to keep it classy with like you know your old school t-shirts with the my favorite is I, and I actually have a glass, but my favorite is Mark Darnold's time instead. Like, that is the best shirt. I mean, when I seen that, I was like, dude, this dude's a genius. The Louis Mark, Hay? No, no, Mark Darnold's thermostat. Oh, the thermostat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's like, oh, it's like you go to the fun. mall. You, like, go to the mall and have, like... Like it printed on your shirt, you know what I mean? Like it's oh, like, no, I think I just did that through Vista Prints and got one shirt made for myself. I do that a lot. I think so I great, do dude. some shirts, maybe yes. Charlie's Angels or something. No, I got, uh, I have Conan and... Uh, <laughs> um, oh, you got the Conan, yeah. I got the Conan, oh. and I got, uh, what's the, uh, Kare- not... not uh, Kare- Wilt Kare- Chamberlain. It's Wilt, it, no, no, it's Wilt Chamberlain. Wilt Chamberlain, you're right. Wilt Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah. You got Conan Barbarian. No, I got that's uh, the destroyer. Yes, that's then, the destroyer. Yeah. Is there another one? But yeah, Red no, Sonia. Could... Is it Red Sonia? Yeah. No. I think you're. I think it might. Dude, there were some. I, I still have them. They're in my drawer. They're great. <laughs> but you know what? I it, normally I'm yeah. a. Just to put on a T-shirt. I grew up just a T-shirt. Yes, I got forced too. into button-ups, but yeah, I don't know. I don't. I wore a couple rock shirts. I'm like, you don't pay me, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> then that's I kind of. Right, I never really like to wear things like that. But then uh-huh. it, I don't know. It, it just we have to wear a work shirt that gives us identity, mm-hmm. and. I don't know. We talked about the sublimation shirts or whatever you call those. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah, that's cool, but you know what? I'm a t-shirt guy. I don't. Yeah, I, I, so I, am I. I. Different. I have a, actually have like a t-shirt problem. Like 
Jennifer gets super mad at me about my t-shirt habit. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> if I see a t-shirt, if I see a t-shirt or I come up with a t-shirt idea, yeah. I'm going to have that t-shirt. Like, <laughs> you know, <what> I, mean? <laughs> well, I collect old window cleaning photos. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, so this is actually a part of the larger photo. Uh-huh. So the larger photo is wider and right. up and down and there's more to it, but right. more building and perspective, cityscape. But we just, I'm like, this is He-Man kind of. He-Man window cleaner. Kind of looks <laughs> dope. But yeah, dude. It's dope, man. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that looks cool. But when you look up close, you can see the water droplets coming down as he's squeegeeing in the black of his body. Right. <laughs> and to me, I'm like, this is better than... Okay, I could wear a Metallica shirt, metal right. up your with the toilet, yeah, yeah. The, the knife coming out of the toilet, metal uh, up your derriere. Yeah. You know, it glows in the dark or skeleton in my shirt for Megadeth. But you know what? <laughs> That's cool, but I'm a window cleaner and I actually you, like it. You, uh, you know, when we're talking about kind of like you're talking about the t shirts and stuff, but you're also, and I wanted to touch on this too before we, I mean, we're about, about an hour, we're about, 30 minutes out from this being over, but I wanted to make sure that we talked about this. You are also a collector of window cleaning. Like you've got there. I mean, I, you had a, a five gallon bucket of old brass handles in your, in your shop just, downstairs. Just sitting in the corner. Just, just sitting in the corner. I mean, you have some window cleaning history in your home. If you saw it's it everywhere. all together and well, you didn't even see the Unger bucket. There's right. Another, I another didn't even know. <laughs> filled to the brim, of overfilled it with the when they they did what well, they did the Kevlar sleeve with the mm. stitching on the outside the way mm. they did that. That were, I got so much stuff like that that is just sitting around. But yeah, there. Oh, we've got stuff going back to you know this goes back to W. J. Dennis and Company, mm -hmm. uh, one of the first people around doing the steel squeegee. When you look at the golden, the arrow, the back uh, of this shirt has a W. J. Dennison um, blue uh, blueprint printed on the oh, back of it. Which one do you have? I'm not sure which one it is. Let's see what you have on there. The Chicago. Yeah, you got that. Okay, yeah, the design there. I yeah, I've got some old catalogs from W. J. D Dennis. I've got some old. I've got the old squeegees. I got the one of the original that goes back to 1921 with the. Really? Yeah, that's one I'm trying. Grace and I are, are searching for rubbers for those. I oh, okay. The are of course bad. Right. I have got uh, so many. Uh, the, the golden was one of their lines back. They had several. I've got, I have got so many different handles. Oh, the, just it's unbelievable the differences in the handles from back then to now. The different companies. I mean, we could literally do a squeegee life show where I pull those handles out and we kind of go. Those are even another one of these. It, that's a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah, dude. Like uh, there's that's, uh, you know, that's another. Yeah, well, not even that. Like I, I definitely want to go and do some some filming of you guys cleaning that. I definitely want to do that because I dig the area that you work in. But uh but anything like that, you know, I, like I told you when we were at the house, I like definitely got to do more stuff because you got a lot to share. Oh man, it's definitely it... without a doubt, you got so much cool shit. You know what I mean? It's you got some cool shit. Oh, I... like, and I, you know, and it's gonna be, you know, there's a lot of people that geek out on tools and stuff like that. You know, I think that'd be cool, man. We'll definitely have to do something else. Definitely. Think about the the the, the conventions, the mm -hmm. trade shows. Mm -hmm. Now I look at where did I get some of my passion from and you know the Grace dance my mother danced uh -huh. for the Cleveland Civic Ballet my grandfather danced did his vaudeville thing and some of that comes in and sneaks uh -huh. in my dad's hot rod days and classic cars and whatnot sneaks in and like I talked about his the good guys driving yeah. the car that you actually rebuilt mm -hmm. I want to use those old steel tools again with the rubbers they were designed to be used with find those but again you know when you look at a at that whole perspective there it just oh my gosh there, it would be cool to do like a you know and maybe we could talk about this you know a, what I a mean? huge convention trade show imagine going to a, remember yeah that's you, what i was saying like a squeegee life like rolling with the window cleaner booth to just do like you know 
It's just a museum. Yeah, yeah, that would be uh, fucking dope, dude. Listen, <laughs> this is what's funny is you think back to, you know, the Cleveland area. Cleveland had the Autorama, and it was at the Cleveland Convention Center mm -hmm. inside, downstairs. This was the greatest. If you look up Morgana, the Kissing Bandit. Uh -huh. I mean, one of those ladies out to here, and it, you know, we're talking 70s, 80s, yeah. and it's a classic hot rod show, mm -hmm. and the tables are filled with classic parts and classic cars, and I'm like, okay, when I go to a trade show, I don't want to just look at the new stuff, because what else brings me? Where did we come from? Don't these folks, I ask Unger and Ettore all the time, can you help me with the stamping on the back? Can you tell me what year you did what stamp on the back of which squeegee? Mm -hmm. We can kind of come up with a date for these but could you imagine now you go to the huge convention let's mm -hmm. just take that for an example and you know when you look at like these booths are set up you get like i don't know wcr had like maybe like a double space or something like that some have a single mm -hmm. and then some of them have like a whole big old block but i'm like right, right. well all right well there were so many empty spaces but what are you missing I can put up a couple of wooden ladders, vintage wooden ladders, and make a hang the, these kind of pictures right here, framed window cleaning mm -hmm. pictures, and do an art show, a gallery, I, you know, history, museum, traveling. Unfortunately, I feel like, you know, something like that, um, I mean, because we have nothing to sell, you know what I mean? And... You're just kind of trying to share the history of window cleaning. Um, unfortunately, like, you know, those some of those shows are like, you know, they want a fucking gajillion dollars for a spot. You know, you know what well, I'm saying? It's like, come where, on, dude. That's where business comes in. And right. <laughs> right. Like, uh, of business and they're actually really understand the culture. And, you know, one of the things we learn is a, a generational business in window cleaning you can't play around with me and try to joke with me or kid me or fool me anything about how good your business is until you've been around mm -hmm. for almost a hundred years and been able to continue the formula. I don't care what anybody says. Your dad hands you something mm -hmm. and your dad dies. You don't get to run back to your dad crying when you can't handle it. Right. When you can't fix it. You have to handle it. Yeah. So yeah, no, you, you can be handed something. And that's, you, I, you know, I think that's a, a testament to you as a, as a person, because this is like, you know, your third generation of you now have passed it on to a fourth generation. It's not easy. And, uh, and that for, for you to continue that I, is pretty commendable in my opinion. You know what I mean? And that's another reason why I was like, I want to definitely do this with you. You know, I told Grace, I, I definitely want to get this done because I feel like you know, there's Craig on there's Craig on Facebook that's gonna explain things down to the nth degree, and then people are gonna be like this guy. But I don't really feel like dudes really know the passion. You're how passionate you are about. It. They see the guy in the pink bunny suit, and they're like, "Oh, this guy's this guy's this guy's a crack up." But you actually had you're super passionate about window cleaning. You you actually have an actual like love for it you know what i mean and it, and not only that but you've got the tenure as well you've been doing it forever your dad did it your grandfather did it now you're you know your daughter's doing it i mean that's that's cool as shit man you know 42 what I mean? years this year 42 years out there in the field doing it more people than not by this point have retired already mm -hmm. and at this stage honestly you know what? I want to make it till our family's been in the field. Not, you know, whatever the name is, we're a family. Yes. We can change the name, but we are a family. And we want, I want to get to 100 years that we've been doing this. That my grandfather, who knows when he actually started, we still haven't determined that. But I'll, how I'll cool just, is that? I'll just get to that 100 year. I'll go beyond that if I'm still alive in some way or another. But yet, the bottom line is, is if these people want to understand about me, everything that I do, Grace can tell you the truth. She can, mm. I don't have to tell you. She'll tell you what it is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't want employees. Right. I don't want to hire you as an employee. I want to train you to ownership. Yeah. I want to teach you how to get out there and do it. Just get it for yourself and for your family. And I don't, she's on salary. She's got her own truck, a Colorado, four door Colorado, 2017. How many people 
would just hire somebody and forget that it's my that's my stepdaughter it's not even my daughter it's my stepdaughter mm. but how many people would hire somebody and i'll do this for the willing you want to come along you got to work with us mm. but you can end up in a truck too but we're going to all work together for your truck for my right. truck for her truck and then you're going to get on salary and we're not going to make you suffer through unemployment through the winter we're mm. going to we're not going to deal with that what we're going to do is we're all going to work together because we're a family that's yeah, the way that's, it was back then, and that's, that's the way I want to do yeah, it now. Yeah. And everything that I'm trying to do to make everybody, every question I answer is because it's not that I just love window cleaning, but I love the window cleaners yeah. in this industry because we are a family. Louis hey, Hay. Were, yeah, Louis Hay, man. He that's passed on. You yeah. know, and what, you know, we want to remember him. We want mm. to just, you know, we want, to, we want people to know, hey, we were here. Mm. And we're going to make this better for you. Those mm. of you coming up now, listen, wherever the camera is, listen, we're making it better for you. Yeah. This is all for you. This isn't for me. I'm done. Mm. I can be done now. I could, we, TJ, we can be done, right? We can, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get into a van and <laughs> drive around like Auntie Rocho. Yeah, yeah, I could be done. Know? I could be done. Burritos, right now, yeah. close the window. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, I definitely looking back is one thing, but like where I, when I started to, I never in a million years, never in a million years would I've ever have guessed this for me. You know what I'm saying? Never. Yeah. That's how strange window cleaning is. And also that, not only that, but the people, not so much the, 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 the window cleaning industry itself, but the people in it are so relatable Oh my God! You, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I just oh, like you yeah. know when I came up to, I was a little leery about coming up there. You know what I mean? It's like you know, there's going to be some local guys there. They're probably going to try to pick my brain about what windows I'm cleaning. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, let me watch these guys. But everyone is so genuine and nice and rela just nice people. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and, we promote that actual vibe, but in yes. a way where it's like you know what. Some folks get bent out of shape about this or that. You mm. know, try not to take it that way on Facebook. Right. Some words, you have to read them in a different context and say, well, wait a minute. Okay, this is what he actually meant. But like right. I said, when you get down and meet somebody in person and you hear the context mm. and you know, one way or the other. You get to know the person and the inflection and the tone. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's they're cool. There. There's so many good people out there. Oh, yeah. And not only are there so many good people out there, but there's so many windows to clean, too. <laughs> too we're not going to... We're, we're never... We yeah. reach the surface. Right. But like I said earlier, we uh, we have not been born yet. Right. We're still, yeah, we're still, we're still in the window to, cleaning womb, man. <laughs> yeah, we're still in the window cleaning womb. We're about to unleash on the world with awesomeness. I, I want to be a lot... I want to be a part of that. Everything that I do to make things yes. better. We just want to make things better. Yes. We've done a lot of things. We make belts and holsters. Yeah, things that's, like that. The, the, that part of it, I would definitely like to, like, maybe sometime here in the future when we've got some more time, I would definitely like to go down the biothane road with you. That was pretty cool. <laughs> what you do. This, yeah. So there's multi layers of this. Well, mm -hmm. there are the ideas where. We could do a thing here, mm -hmm. like you're talking with the whole video thing, but mm -hmm. it, it would be a weekend. It, this might even have to be an overnight <laughs> right. it's the next day. Right. Saturday <laughs> early, we would have to start with some Saturday morning cartoons because right. you don't get into the vibe <laughs> without some Saturday morning cartoons. <laughs> right. So, you know, we can go with the classics because mm -hmm. that's what we're going to do. Right, anyway. of course. Yeah, that's what we're going to do anyway, yeah. I mean, you got stuff like that going on. You, you look at this. This is like a two-hour thing that we've already chewed up. Right. And we haven't even breached the surface of some of the right. really good. Well, I do. I do have. I mean, for the people that are listening and watching to this, um, I do have I have a bunch of footage of the basement, us chatting in your basement in the workshop. Um, I have some footage of you chatting in the parking lot. That's all. That's all part of that project. I was telling you, I'm kind of okay. it's on the down low. Um, it'll be done by the end of the year. Um, 
But I definitely, without a doubt, I definitely want, like I said, when, like when you feel like there's a really cool opportunity, like on the horizon, like, oh, it'd be cool if we had TJ come up, well, I will take right the now. time. Right. Opportunity. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anytime. It's, well, <clears throat> about this, what you're talking about here is, mm -hmm. you know, look at the, the folks that are watching, right? Mm -hmm. And you could sit there and say, hey, if this was interesting, do you want to go deeper? Do you want to hear more? Right. And you chime in. TJ, I think, and then yes. you could even set up another one of these where yes. they can ask you a bunch of questions that they want to ask. Right. I think kind of like the podcast, but not live, where they just right. email you the questions. And yeah, I mean, definitely. You could, you could, we, I mean, the California days, the vagabond days. Right. There are so, <laughs> so much. I knew. Days. That's what I told Grace. I was like, I was like, you know, it's going to be, it's, it's, it's not going to all work in one. It's, we're going to have to do it. I know. We're going to have to do because another then, one. Think about this. <laughs> and the idea of, imagine if we're in that truck with the going around from town to town, you know what? WCR right there with the big logo on the side, us rolling into town and saying, hey, we're doing an actual meet up <laughs> we'll clean some windows then i could show them hey we're in town but i'm going to take you over here mm -hmm. does anybody any of you guys do the windows over here no nope. okay i'm going to go land it right now right and that's part of the vagabond window cleaner when i was rolling around across the united states with no particular place to go right and uh no i did not go down to the pocono but you could definitely i mean and that's i mean that's something that's cool about what we do i mean you could pretty much take this Put it in the in the trunk of your car or on the back of your motorcycle and go and do this to make cash. You know what I mean? It's one of those jobs. You know what I mean? It's it's cool. You don't even have to man. make cash. My wife, we went on a we her work at the time had a trip down to St. Simon Island, Georgia. Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. uh, the whistling window cleaner mm -hmm. is the legend. It, for window cleaners, I found that out. I searched him out, could not find him. They say mm -hmm. because of COVID, he may have moved on or died. But wow. he was an older guy. The, the St. Simon Island whistling window cleaner. There is a legend there about really? it. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. And he would whistle, do storefronts. Homeless guy doing storefronts. Whistle. You know those guys that can, I can't whistle. Yes, They're so not, loud. Yeah. You can hear them in from where we are. You can hear them. In Canada, across the lake, and, and can like actually Ricola. carry and can actually carry a tune. Yeah, but he, while he whistling whistles the Ricola horn <laughs> on the mountain, yeah, he whistles louder than that. <laughs> but this is the whistling window cleaner of Saint yeah. Simon Island, Georgia. When uh, we went to visit, go figure. When I go, we take my truck, work truck. Uh -huh. and I'm, you know, we're driving down. I'm not flying. Mm -hmm. We're taking my, and we're going to take my work truck because. You know, so we stay at the hotel the first night on the road down there, and we get up the next morning, and my wife's never done this before, the way I do it when I'm on the road. So I drive over to this little stop off the freeway for some breakfast, uh -huh. put in the order, and I tell the girl, well, you know what? I'm bored, and I'm. do you mind if I just clean the outside windows? I'm not going to charge or anything. I just want to clean the outside windows. I'm bored. We're going on vacation. She's like, I don't care. Have at it. She thought I was kidding. Yeah. I get out and I've got my truck. I'm in my work truck. I was all my tools. Everything's in there. Right. I, and I can, I'm doing it. You want, want water fed done? I'll do that. But so I <laughs> clean all the outside windows and I'm packing up and she walks out with the food and I got done before they finished my food. So mm -hmm. I would have sat in my truck and done nothing. Done nothing. I was mm -hmm. sat there, done nothing. And then I would have handed her money, gone in and handed her money. And now, I finished up. She came out with the food. When I first got there and went in and ordered and everything, told her what I was doing. I just said, hey, so she knew I was. Got the one I was done. She, the owner, I called him, and he was so appreciative that this is all free. Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Now, you and I know this. It took my wife and I both had breakfast, so we ordered for two. Right. I don't know, whatever it was, maybe about 20 bucks ish, 20, 25 bucks for two uh, breakfasts with everything. It took me literally five minutes to do the outside. Uh, so I got $25 for five minutes. $25 right. value in value for five minutes of work. I would have paid for that and sat on my butt and right. done nothing and then gone in and brought it out. She brought it out to me. I didn't even have to go in. <laughs> I didn't have to go in. 
<laughs> and she brought, and it was that easy though. Right. <laughs> I didn't know these people. Where, where were we? We were, I don't even know where we were. We were not in Ohio anymore. Virginia, West Virginia, who knows? Outside of Charlotte, she says. Oh, okay. So I, do, do I know these people? No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm. And that's when people say, oh, you know. Window cleaners are social butterflies, man. You know what I mean? You yeah. have to be. You have to be able to deal with people. You know what I mean? That's, that's yeah. that just a testament to your people skills right there. You know what I mean? Like you just walk into a strange place and like, hey, man, I'm going to clean your windows. Is that cool on the outside? Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Like you got to that, that's that's a skill that window cleaning will give you is that those 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 personable people skills. You'll get that really fast. If you don't, you're going to struggle in this industry. Oh, if you're yeah. not good at talking to people and dealing with people, you're going to struggle doing this. You have yeah. to be the type of person that can speak to people. You know what I mean? Um because if you don't, if you don't have a, a personable manner, like I guess you know, like a bedside manner about you, um, man, is it going to be tough to sell jobs? You know, oh, yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, and I just, you know, there's, there, I work for people and I, I don't ask. I tell them this is what we're doing. You know, they, okay, you, yeah, I trust you. You know, but mm-hmm. you sell that idea to them. And if you don't know them, it doesn't matter. If right. you have never been there, I don't care. And that when my window clean, that again, anybody that's watching could ask for more if they mm-hmm. want, I assume. Um, and one of the topics, the window cleaning vagabond years that I had kind of going on there for a period, mm-hmm. that just, you know, the people that are really worried and concerned, what do I do? How do I do it? I'm afraid to move from here to there or, you know, how do you, I don't know how to land these jobs, you know, mm-hmm. that period can help them understand, you know, not only can you land a job in a strange place, you can do that every day in a new strange place on a daily basis, go from one town to the next. Here's right. enough work for gas and food. And you know what, maybe enough Tell you that's my plan, man. I'm just like, I've been doing the podcast all these years. And by the time I'm ready to, you know, my house will be paid off and you know, another six years, I'm like, you know, I'm thinking like, maybe I'll just buy a motor home and just kind of like tool around and vlog and clean, clean windows with the dudes I've met doing the podcast over yeah. the years. How cool will that be? You know what I That's, mean? That would be lunch. like, that'd be like, <laughs> yeah. And have lunch. No, <laughs> you're, 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 yeah. It's yeah. the perfect yeah. thing for uh, our culture to be able to progress mm-hmm. into because you know, it's you're, you're working on some stuff. Grace and I, we've been collecting video footage for the last, I don't even know how long. I get into projects and people that, when you figure out who I am, mm-hmm. projects, if I say I'm doing something, sometimes this could take years. Right. I mean, there I've got so many projects going on, so many, and there are things that take time. We've been collecting footage winter, spring, uh-huh. summer, fall from window cleaners all around the world, uh-huh. trying to put together Grace's editing and my band, we did that. We played on the Squeegee Life. Uh-huh. We did another "Rolling with the Window Cleaner" song, it's oh, a okay. bluesy thing. Okay. And we recorded live here, captured okay. it, and it's raw. We uh-huh. liked how it sounded, even with some of the mistakes. We don't care because we're humans. Right. We make mistakes. Right. We want that to come out. We just want to be human. Mm-hmm. We don't have to be virtuoso. Right. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. And window cleaning, I can be, but at music, you know, we're just having fun. And we did this song. Grace has been collecting footage from everybody we can all around the world in the mm-hmm. pro group. And if you've got footage, send it to us, lkwdwc at gmail.com, or so you'll find us. Send it to us. Right, right. But uh, definitely, that's cool. Yeah, we're making a music video because, you know, we don't have something like that. Mm-hmm. I said, like, you know, it would be nice to have like a Big Chuck and Little John type of a show. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you know. Hey man, I got a buddy that's a tattoo artist. He's his name is Victor Fontaine. And he's uh he's uh uh is from the Cleveland area. Um he was actually on the show. He was on actually on Big Chuck and Little John, dude. As like, a kid? As, no, no, as uh I don't know, I say probably like a in his twenty somethings. Okay, so not as a Boy Scout. Not as a Boy Scout. Yeah, he was on there. He was on there. He was uh, uh, like a Marine. He was dressed up as like an He was act, an actual Marine. Oh, but he was, gotcha. But he just was, in the audience. No, no, no. On the show. A like, big you know, one, 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 yeah, one, a big Chuck and Little John, like Skit. He was, yeah. 
Oh, okay, in one of the skits. Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. Certain <laughs> yes. Eth- I always want to do a certain ethnic window cleaner type <laughs> of a skit. <laughs> you know? Make a yes. device. Yes, yes. Dude, know, that'd be so great, Craig. <laughs> you know, your, your, your guys' show is kind of, you, you've got some components of it yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. And I'm I've, I've like, okay, over here with the band, I'm like, I want to build the Trocadero Lounge. That's my <laughs> in-house. Yeah. <laughs> bar lounge with the music the window music, the video games and you have that, your david letterman set up and yeah that's kind of like a local thing the big chuck and little john show i mean that's kind of oh, like man. you know you, the ghoul you know what i mean like come on what are we talking about here <laughs> we we come from an, a very innovative creative yes. place because we're stuck inside all winter so you have to right. come up with that was and- that was like really the main like uh, one of the that was really to be quite honest uh, like i was like I, I need to get like an ohio dude on here i need to do one of these with an ohio dude just to catch the vibe you know what i mean yeah. like yeah it's, it's, it's yeah. a vibe man you know what i mean i you know i know some people probably you know they know me and they know you you know what i mean so we they kind of like you know all right it all makes sense you know <laughs> Hey, hey, man! It's just know, the area, dude. Like, we yeah. back to kill the Irishman. <laughs> yeah, we grew yes. up in a very tough environment, yeah, yeah. and right now, I mean, I think Chicago and Baltimore are bad. <laughs> right, we're yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. And we're, it's really not that much worse. We're right. we're way worse than Detroit. I right. mean, <laughs> everything there is gone. It all yeah, decayed. It's all gone. Yeah. Down, there's still a lot, shit, a lot of shit going on in Cleveland, Ohio. You know, there's still yeah. a lot of people around. So, now, if you want to be I, there, farmer in detroit there's nothing in the way anymore yeah i don't know i just i knew i was like i wanted to get somebody on here to represent ohio um someone not not necessarily just ohio but northern ohio i i you know i was like i wanted you know i just felt like that needed to be you know what i mean we need to get that kind of vibe i wanted to do one of these you know it's like i need to do one with an ohio guy you know what i mean i want and you of course perfect choice I had another guy said I wanted to get another Ohio guy's perspective, but it didn't happen. He stood me up, but you know it is what it is. You uh, as usual. I knew I knew I had you. I was like, well, I got Craig, so I'm good. You know what I mean? I'm good. I got Craig. So. Oh yeah. And the other I'm dude good. would have just been a bonus. <laughs> I'm good. Usually, I don't wear the watch, and I never know what time and yeah. Day well, it is it's or- really weird. Um, setting up an appointment with Craig because I'm not setting up an appointment with Craig. I'm setting up an appointment with Grace, <laughs> your handler. <laughs> Which yeah, that girl, she she deserves a medal. I gotta. I mean, I love you. You know, what I mean, you're a great fucking guy. Um, but you definitely need a fucking handler. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I, I, I'm not. I, I'm not joking when I your say your wife it. and your daughter deserve an accommodation, a, a, like a special award you know what i mean <laughs> I try my best. Uh, hopefully they know that i do whatever i can to take it you know, yes you're like a sweetheart of a dude family yes i put a lot into my family that same way yes um and you you know this and you know the folks at wcr know this we just did that valentine's day thing where we collected valentine's day cards mm. from you and a bunch of other window cleaners uh-huh. And we sent them a free gift because they're always doing free gifts to For us. us. Yes. And I'm like, I thought that was as soon oh. as Grace hit me up about that. I was like, oh man, that's a really good idea, man. You know what I mean? That's a super good idea. Like we need to find out what WCR's favorite pizza place is so we can send them pizza every now and then. You oh. know what I mean? Just lunch on us, guys. Just, you know. Okay. <laughs> Don't say anything yeah. to them, but we, we have, a, they're, they're things. But right. you know, I think they already know how we are because when yeah. we go, we went up. And when we go up there, we've visited a few times now. But when we go up, we don't come empty-handed. They all right. get gifts, and we shower them. Oh, with dude, co- chocolates and bars of soap and dude, beer. From look at you! Did. I mean, region. I we met you at Cedar Point, and you're like, "Hey, man, come to Cedar Point. We'll, we got, we got, we can get you in for free. Just come hang out. We'll go." You know, I'm like, "All right, cool." I get there, and you had a present for me. Well, for I, us, you had a present I, for us. But I also felt bad that you know what's funny. What? I had that and everything, but I forgot one thing, and I still need to get for your wife is the beer. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. forgot the beer for your wife because we're not beer drinkers. Yeah, she's a she's a beer drinker. She like I'm not a beer drinker. She's uh, the beer drinker. Yeah, yeah. She we don't drink. Yeah, she'll but, appreciate but, that. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I, 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 that was the one thing I'm like. But the, you know, the guys in Europe and all those folks, they uh, know. 
we send stuff to Europe when we can. Uh, you know, we, we, I don't know that we do those little contests every now and then people don't, some, a lot of people don't realize that grace, I, I do a contest within some stupid posts that I put. And uh, then I, the people that follow along, they're, they're lucky enough. Some of them are like, it's right. so random that you just really have to pay attention. Right. Right. And you'll find it. There's contests all the time. I that dig that about you. Yeah. You're, you don't have to, Right. It's not WCR doing it. Right. It's just we, Craig. It's just Craig random, doing shit. The, yeah, it's just Craig doing shit. <laughs> flash, flash mobs, remember those? Yeah, where yeah. Just, just show up. Right. That, I just flash send flash contests out. I don't even know what, but it's yeah. It just helps. We need to. We we need to, when uh, the first time I got into the pro group, there was so much disconnectivity between the window cleaners here in America. <laughs> between the window cleaners here in America and across the pond in all mm -hmm. different directions, mm -hmm. everybody was like, eh, I'm better than you, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. No, we're all actually really good, but right. we learn We just do we things differently. From. Yeah, we just you know? do things a little differently. Yeah. You know? We do, a, we blend almost everything because I do a lot of stuff that's more of the old school, old world style mm -hmm. in how we schedule, how we sell our business and how we perform the work. And we use the, we use tools that are older than, Everybody, you know, who's the oldest person in that we recognize in our industry? I mean, th when you think about oldest or been around a long time, Phillips Apt, been around a long time. Phillips been around. Doug Apt. Uh, Doug you know, Apt, yeah. Uh, you know, Sorbo's been around a long time. Yeah. But when you look at some of these folks that have been around a long time, I've got squeegees going back to 1921. Mm -hmm. And so these, even these guys, were they around? No. Right. So you know, that's it's. There is something to be said just for the folks that are getting into this. If we can, guys like us, we've been around, we're a little more, I don't know, some folks can talk to people like this. Yes. Um, some folks can captivate the attention. Yes. Do this, do that, whatever you want to say in that regard. But what the new folks need is for us to be able to feed them some of this. Hey, yeah. They would never even know this stuff. They, that Walt Disney, Donald Duck. They, people didn't even know that that existed. Yeah. And that's part of our culture that they were even doing back then on RK right. radio doing right. a, like, you're kidding me. You gotta, the, you gotta make sure that the old ways and the, and stuff like that aren't lost. You know, yeah. I mean, you gotta make sure so that, you know, like I said, that's what that, I appreciate that about you is like, you're, you're a champion of that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you know, being uh, like the awareness of all of that, you know what I mean? There's not very many people that do that kind of thing. Mark is really good about always bringing up the way the things used to be. You know what I mean? You yeah. have no idea because this is the way things used to be. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, definitely, uh, definitely a worthwhile endeavor. You know what I mean? And we're going to definitely, we'll be doing another one of these where we'll, me and Craig are going to figure out some times here moving on into the future to do a couple more of these maybe we'll get into one where we can uh show your progression of tools your your hand tools i can't that would be a super fun to do oh but yeah I, again i i i super duper appreciate you doing this with me um there will be more um but i i thanks for everyone for watching and everything Real quick, go ahead no you go ahead craig ask the listeners this too if they okay. want but I'm going to I'm going to put myself on the hot seat. Make here. sure you put it hey, in the comments. Comments, guys. Go ahead. Is Grace I think you might want to ask her to do mm -hmm. one of these and that's where you can really get some insight on me as as far as I definitely want to do that. I just Yeah. I, I didn't, you know, I've, we've had her on the podcast and I was like, "Well, I don't want to ask her to, you know what I mean? I, I was like Oh, she'll do it. We had her. On, I know she. I know yeah, she will. Have, I know she will. But I was like, I definitely want to ask. I wanted to ask you first because I was like, well, yeah. we've cut into her time pretty much. The last cut. Well, I mean, she's been on twice, like almost back to back for us. She's a sweetheart for doing that too. But you know what? definitely, without a doubt, like I want to do one because you know, it's. I, I mean, I you know, again, the podcasts are really cool. Um. I, and I enjoy doing them. I enjoy that dynamic, but I feel like these are a little more like the, the, the interview is a little bit like I can let people go and like, like I have let you hear just like talk about themselves so people can get an idea. Cause these are like the people that I'm interviewing, 
you may be able to relate to these people or you yeah. might see this pe person on social media and just like, you know, I really like this guy. He's a good person or I really like this this girl. She's really sweet and she's kicking ass, whatever. I'd like to know more about her. That's what this is for. You know what I mean? So definitely want to get that done with her. Oh, um, yeah. This but, is fun. Yeah, I, I really, I really, really appreciate you doing this with me, Craig. I really do. We'll do it again soon. Is there anything else you want to add before I stop recording? Oh, gosh. I don't know. The only thing I could say is, is we'll just see on the flip side. Yes. Yes. We'll catch you guys the next time.